Day 1 Hello, my friend. How are you today? Hi, Jack. I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. What did you do yesterday? Yesterday, I went to the park with my family. We had a picnic. And you? I watched a movie at home. It was fun. What was the movie about? It was about a man who travels in time to save the world. That sounds interesting. Did you like it? Yes, I liked it very much. It was exciting. I want to watch it too. Can you tell me the name of the movie? Of course. The name of the movie is Time Hero. Thank you, Jack. I will watch it soon. You're welcome, Emily. What are your plans for the weekend? This weekend, I will go shopping with my friends. We want to buy new clothes. What about you? I will visit my grandparents in the countryside. I haven't seen them for a long time. That's nice. I'm sure they will be happy to see you. Yes, I think so too. I miss them very much. I hope you have a great time with your grandparents. Thank you, Emily. I hope you have fun shopping with your friends. Thanks, Jack. I'm sure we will. By the way, have you tried the new restaurant near our school? No, I haven't. Is it good? Yes, it's very good. They serve delicious food. We should go there together someday. That's a great idea, Jack. Let's plan it for next week. Sure, I'll check my schedule and let you know. Perfect. I can't wait to try the new restaurant. Me too, Emily. I think you'll like it. I'm sure I will. Thank you for the suggestion. You're welcome. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. You too, Jack. See you later. Goodbye, Emily. Have a nice day. Goodbye, Jack. You too. Day 2 Hi, Sarah. Have you ever been on a safari tour? Hello, John. No, I haven't. What is a safari tour? A safari tour is a trip where you can see wild animals in their natural habitat. It's really exciting. That sounds interesting. Where can we go for a safari tour? We can go to Africa. There are many countries with beautiful safari parks, like Kenya and Tanzania. Wow, I would love to go to Africa. What animals can we see there? We can see lions, elephants, giraffes, zebras, and many more animals. That's amazing. How long is a safari tour? It can be from a few days to a couple of weeks, depending on what you want to see and do. I think a week would be enough for me. What do we need to bring for the safari tour? We should bring comfortable clothes, a hat, sunscreen, insect repellent, and a good camera to take pictures of the animals. Great! Do we need to book the safari tour in advance? Yes, it's better to book it a few months before the trip, so we can find the best deals and make sure everything is arranged. I can't wait to go on a safari tour. What else can we do in Africa? We can visit local villages, learn about their culture, and try delicious African food. That sounds like a fantastic experience. I'm really looking forward to it. Me too, Sarah. I'm sure we'll have an unforgettable time on our safari tour in Africa. Let's start planning our trip. Thank you for telling me about safari tours, John. You're welcome. Sarah, I'm happy to share this adventure with you. Day 3 
Hi, Mary. I'm looking for a place to rent. Do you have any suggestions? Hi, John. Sure, I can help. What kind of place are you looking for? A house, an apartment, or a summer villa? I think an apartment would be best for me. What do you think? That's a good choice. Apartments are usually cheaper than houses and villas. How many rooms do you need? I need at least two rooms, one for myself and one for my office. What's your budget for the rent? I can spend up to $1,000 per month. That should be enough to find a nice apartment. What area do you want to live in? I'd like to live close to the city center, but not too close. I prefer a quiet neighborhood. I understand. Let me check online to see what's available in that area. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate your help. No problem, John. I found an apartment that might be perfect for you. It's a two-bedroom apartment, located in a quiet neighborhood, and the rent is $950 per month. That sounds interesting. Can you give me more information about it? Sure. The apartment is on the second floor of a building with an elevator. It has a balcony, a kitchen, and a bathroom with a bathtub. That's great. I like having a balcony. Is it furnished? Yes, it is. The apartment has a bed, a sofa, a dining table, and a desk. Wonderful. How can I contact the owner? I can give you the phone number. Would you like to call them now? Yes, please. I want to arrange a visit as soon as possible. Here is the phone number, 555-123-4567. Good luck, John. I hope you like the apartment. Thank you so much for your help, Mary. I will call the owner right away. You're welcome, John. Let me know how it goes. If you need any more help, just ask. I will, Mary. Have a great day. You too, John. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mary. Hi, I'm looking for some clothes for my son. He's five years old and needs some new outfits for school. Sure, we have a great selection of clothes for boys in that age range. What kind of things are you looking for? I need some pants and shirts that are durable and easy to move around in. He's a very active kid. I see. We have some great options that would fit the bill. How about these khaki pants and this striped t-shirt? Those look great. Do you have any sweaters or jackets for cooler weather? Yes, we have some nice sweaters and light jackets that would be perfect for fall. How about this gray cardigan and this windbreaker? Those would be perfect. And what about shoes? We have a variety of sneakers and boots that are both comfortable and stylish. Would you like to take a look? Yes, please. These black sneakers look great. Those are one of our most popular styles. They're also made with durable materials that will last a long time. That's great. I think we have everything we need. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. Don't hesitate to let us know if you need any more assistance. Have a great day. Day 4 Hey Bob, have you ever been on a cruise before? Hi Alice, no, I haven't. How about you? I've been on a cruise once, and it was a great experience. I was thinking about going on a Caribbean cruise with Royal Caribbean. Have you heard of them? Yes, I have. They are a popular cruise company. What can you tell me about their Caribbean cruises? They offer various itineraries and visit many beautiful islands in the Caribbean. The ships are incredible, with lots of activities, entertainment, and dining options. 
That sounds like fun. How long do these cruises usually last? The cruises can range from a few days to a couple of weeks, depending on the itinerary you choose. What kind of activities can I expect on the ship? There are swimming pools, water slides, rock climbing walls, theaters, and even ice skating rinks on some ships. They also have various clubs and bars for nighttime entertainment. Wow, that sounds amazing. Are there any special events or theme nights on the cruises? Yes, they often have themed parties, like Pirate Night or Formal Night. They also have live shows, comedy acts, and musical performances. What about the ports of call? What kind of activities can I do on the islands? There are many excursions you can book, like snorkeling, beach trips, historical tours, or even ziplining. You can also explore the islands on your own if you prefer. That sounds exciting. How do I book a cruise with Royal Caribbean? You can either book through their website or contact a travel agent. They often have special promotions and discounts, so it's a good idea to check their website regularly. Thanks for the information, Alice. I'll definitely consider taking a Caribbean cruise with Royal Caribbean. You're welcome, Bob. I'm sure you'll have an amazing time if you decide to go. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Thank you, Alice. I'll let you know if I need any more help. Have a great day. You too, Bob. Enjoy planning your trip. Day 5 Hey Isabella, have you heard about the Maldives? It's a beautiful group of islands with luxury resorts. Hi Eric. Yes, I've heard about the Maldives. It's a popular vacation destination, right? Exactly. I was thinking, wouldn't it be great if we could plan a 15-day trip to a luxury resort in the Maldives with our school friends? That sounds amazing. I've always wanted to visit the Maldives. How do we start planning this trip? First, we need to decide which resort we want to stay at. There are so many to choose from. Maybe we can ask our friends for suggestions. I'm sure some of them have been to the Maldives before. Great idea. We can create a group chat and ask everyone for their input. After we decide on a resort, we'll need to book our flights and accommodations. It might be a good idea to start looking for deals now. Yes, I'll start searching for flights and resort packages. We should also decide on the dates for our trip. How about we make a list of activities we want to do while we're in the Maldives? That way, we can plan our days accordingly. That's a smart idea. There are so many activities to choose from, like snorkeling, scuba diving, and island hopping. Don't forget about relaxing on the beach and enjoying the beautiful sunsets. Of course. We'll also need to decide on a budget for our trip. Yes, we should take into account the cost of flights, accommodations, activities, and meals. Once we have a rough budget, we can share it with our friends and see if everyone is comfortable with it. I think it's important to be flexible with our plans, so everyone can have a good time. I agree. Let's get started on planning this amazing vacation. I can't wait. This will be a trip to remember. Thanks for suggesting it, Eric. You're welcome, Isabella. I'm sure it will be an unforgettable experience for all of us. Let's make it happen. Day 6 Hi Isabella, have you ever thought about visiting the ancient centers of the Aztec and Maya civilizations? Hello Eric, yes, I've always been fascinated by their history and culture. Have you ever been there? I haven't, but I've been doing some research and I think it would be an amazing experience. Would you like to plan a trip together? That sounds like a great idea. Where should we start? 
Well, we could begin by visiting the ancient city of Teotihuacan in Mexico. It was an important center for both the Aztec and Maya civilizations. I've heard of Teotihuacan. It has the famous Pyramid of the Sun and the Pyramid of the Moon, right? Yes, that's correct. We could also visit the Templo Mayor in Mexico City, which was the main temple of the Aztec civilization. I'd love to see that. What about the Maya civilization? Where can we go to learn more about them? We could visit Chichen Itza in Mexico, which is one of the most famous Maya sites. It has the Cuculcan Pyramid, also known as El Castillo. That sounds fascinating. Are there any other important Maya sites we should consider visiting? Definitely. We could visit Palenque and Tulum in Mexico, Tikal in Guatemala, and Copan in Honduras. Each of these sites has its own unique history and architecture. Wow, there are so many places to explore. How should we plan our trip? I suggest we create an itinerary, starting with the sites we want to visit most. We can then research transportation options and accommodations near each site. That's a good plan. We should also learn more about the history and culture of the Aztec and Maya civilizations before our trip. I agree. We could read some books, watch documentaries, and maybe even take a course on their history and culture. I think that would really enrich our experience. Let's start planning and make sure we have enough time to fully appreciate each site. Absolutely. I'm really excited about this trip, Isabella. I think we're going to have an unforgettable experience. I agree, Eric. I can't wait to explore the ancient centers of the Aztec and Maya civilizations with you. Day 7 Hello, Lisa. Have you ever been on a ship before? Hi, Tom. Yes, I have. I went on a cruise last year. How about you? That's cool. I'm a sailor, so I spend a lot of time on ships. Wow, that must be an exciting job. What kind of places do you visit? It is. I've visited many countries, but my favorite trip was when we sailed near a tropical island. That sounds amazing. What was the island like? It was beautiful. The island had white sandy beaches, crystal clear water, and tall palm trees. I can imagine how relaxing it must be to spend time there. Did you have a chance to explore the island? Yes, we had some free time, so we went ashore and explored the island. We found a small village with friendly people. What did you do in the village? We walked around, talked to the locals, and tried some delicious food at a small restaurant. That sounds like a great experience. What was your favorite part of the trip? My favorite part was watching the sunset on the beach. It was the most beautiful sunset I've ever seen. I wish I could see that too. Did you take any pictures? Yes, I did. I can show you some photos if you'd like. I would love to see them. Maybe you can inspire me to plan my next vacation. Sure, I'll bring my photo album next time we meet. That would be great. Thank you, Tom. I'm looking forward to seeing your pictures. You're welcome, Lisa. I hope you'll enjoy them as much as I did. Have a nice day. You too, Tom. Goodbye. Day 8 Hi Bob, did you go camping in the mountains last weekend? Hello Alice, yes, I did. It was a lot of fun. How about you? Have you ever gone camping? No, I haven't. Can you tell me more about it? What do you do when you go camping? Sure, Alice. First, we choose a nice spot in the mountains to set up our tents. 
Then, we go for a hike and explore the area. That sounds exciting. What do you do in the evening? In the evening, we usually make a campfire. We sit around the fire, talk, and sometimes we even play the guitar and sing songs. Wow, that sounds lovely. I would like to try camping one day. What do I need to bring for a camping trip? You'll need a tent, a sleeping bag, warm clothes, food, water, a flashlight, and a first aid kit. Thanks, Bob. How do you make a campfire safely? You need to find a clear spot away from trees and grass. Dig a small pit and surround it with rocks. Put dry leaves, twigs, and larger pieces of wood in the pit, and then use a match or lighter to start the fire. That's good to know. Do you have any other tips for camping? Always make sure to clean up after yourself and leave no trace. Be careful with your food, as it can attract animals. And always let someone know where you're going and when you'll be back. Thank you for the advice, Bob. It sounds like a great experience. I hope to go camping soon. You're welcome, Alice. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you have any questions or need help planning your trip, just let me know. I will, Bob. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. You too, Alice. Happy camping. Day 9 Hi Bob, how are you today? Hello Alice, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine too, thanks. I wanted to tell you about my trip to Dubai. Have you ever been there? No, I haven't been to Dubai. How was your trip? It was amazing. I stayed at the Hotel Burj Al Arab. It's a very beautiful and famous hotel. Wow, that sounds great. What did you do in Dubai? I visited many places. I went to the mall, saw the big aquarium, and went up to the top of the Burj Khalifa. The Burj Khalifa? Is that the tallest building in the world? Yes, it is. The view from the top was incredible. You can see the whole city from there. That must have been exciting. Did you go to the beach? Yes, I went to Jumeirah Beach. The water was warm and the sand was soft. I had a great time. It sounds like you had a fantastic trip. What about the food in Dubai? The food was delicious. I tried many different dishes, like kebabs and shawarma. There were also many international restaurants. I've heard that Dubai is famous for its shopping. Did you buy anything special? Yes, I went to the gold souk and bought some gold jewelry. There were also many big malls with lots of shops. I would love to go to Dubai someday. Do you have any tips for me if I go? Just make sure to dress respectfully, drink lots of water, and be prepared for the heat. And don't forget to take lots of pictures. Thank you for the advice, Alice. I hope I can visit Dubai soon. You're welcome, Bob. I'm sure you'll have a great time. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you, Alice. Have a nice day. You too, Bob. Take care. Day 10 Hi Bob, how was your day? Hello Alice, my day was good, thank you. How about yours? It was fine, thanks. I saw a family spending time together at home. It was interesting to see what each person was doing. That sounds nice. What were they doing? The father was working on the computer, the mother was reading a book on the sofa, the daughter was studying on the floor, and their cat was playing with a ball of yarn. It sounds like a cozy evening at home. Did you know the family? No, I didn't. 
I just saw them through the window as I was walking by. I thought it was a lovely scene. Yes, it sounds like a nice way to spend an evening. Do you like spending time at home with your family, Alice? I do, Bob. I enjoy reading books, watching movies, and playing games with my family. How about you? I like spending time with my family too. We often cook dinner together and chat about our day. That's nice. What are some activities you enjoy doing with your family? We like going for walks, having picnics in the park, and sometimes going to the movies. Those are great activities. Do you have any pets, Bob? Yes, I have a dog named Buddy. He loves playing fetch and going for walks with us. How about you, Alice? I have a cat named Whiskers. She is very playful and loves chasing after toys. It's fun to have pets at home, isn't it? Yes, it is. They bring joy and companionship to our lives. I agree. It's nice to have someone to care for and who cares for you in return. That's true, Bob. Well, I should get going. It was nice talking to you about families and pets. It was nice talking to you too, Alice. Have a great day. Day 11 Hi, Mary. I'm going to take the metro today. Have you ever used it before? Hi, John. Yes, I have used the metro many times. Where are you going? I need to go to the city center for a meeting. Can you help me understand how to use the metro? Of course, John. First, you need to find the nearest metro station. I think there is one close to my house. What do I do when I get there? When you arrive at the station, you need to buy a ticket. There are ticket machines where you can purchase one. How much does a ticket cost? A single ticket usually costs around $2. You can also buy a daily or weekly pass if you plan to use the metro often. I think I'll just buy a single ticket for now. What do I do after buying the ticket? Once you have your ticket, you need to find the correct platform. There will be signs to guide you. How do I know which train to take? The trains are usually labeled with their destination. Make sure to check the metro map to see which line you need to take. Okay, I understand. What happens when the train arrives? When the train arrives, wait for the doors to open and let passengers exit first. Then, you can board the train and find a seat or a place to stand. How do I know when to get off the train? There will be announcements for each station. Listen carefully and get off the train when you hear your destination. Thank you, Mary. That helps a lot. Is there anything else I should know? Just remember to keep your ticket with you while you're on the train. Sometimes there are ticket inspectors who will check. I'll make sure to do that. Thanks again for your help, Mary. You're welcome, John. Have a great trip. Let me know if you have any questions. I will, Mary. Have a nice day. You too, John. Goodbye. Day 12 Hi, Sarah. I heard you are a photographer. Can you give me some advice? Hi, Mike. Sure, I'd be happy to help. What do you need advice on? I'm planning a trip to the Swiss Alps, and I want to take great photos. What kind of camera should I use? That sounds like an amazing trip. A DSLR or mirrorless camera would be best for high-quality photos. Do you have a budget for the camera? I can spend up to $1,000. What brand do you recommend? For that budget, I suggest looking at Nikon or Canon cameras. They are both reliable and have a good range of lenses. 
Thanks, Sarah. What kind of lenses should I get for landscape photography? A wide-angle lens is great for capturing the beautiful scenery in the Swiss Alps. You might also want a telephoto lens for distant subjects. That's very helpful. Should I take a tripod with me? Yes, a tripod is a must for landscape photography. It helps keep your camera steady and allows you to take sharp photos. Great. Any tips on the best time to take photos in the mountains? The golden hour, which is shortly after sunrise or before sunset, is the best time for taking photos. The light is soft and warm, which can create stunning images. I'll keep that in mind. What about clothing? I've never been to the Swiss Alps before. Make sure to dress warmly and in layers. The weather can change quickly in the mountains. Waterproof boots, a hat, and gloves are also important. Thanks for the advice, Sarah. How can I improve my photography skills before the trip? Practice is key. Spend some time getting familiar with your camera and its settings. You can also watch online tutorials or take a photography class. I'll do that. One more question. How do I keep my camera safe during the trip? Use a good quality camera bag with padding to protect your camera and lenses. Also, keep your camera dry and avoid extreme temperatures. Thank you so much for your help, Sarah. I can't wait to take amazing photos in the Swiss Alps. You're welcome, Mike. I'm sure you'll have a great time. Don't forget to share your photos with me when you return. I definitely will. Have a great day, Sarah. You too, Mike. Enjoy your trip. Goodbye. Goodbye, Sarah. Day 13 Hi, Mary. How are you today? Hi, John. I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm good, thanks. I was thinking of visiting my grandparents this weekend. Would you like to join me? That sounds lovely. I haven't seen them in a long time. What time are we leaving? I was thinking of leaving around 10 a.m. on Saturday. Is that okay with you? That works for me. How long does it take to get to their house? It's about a two-hour drive. We can have lunch with them and spend the afternoon together. That sounds perfect. What should we bring with us? I think we should bring some flowers for my grandmother and maybe some snacks for the road. Great idea. I can make some sandwiches for the trip. Do you think your grandparents would like that? I'm sure they would appreciate it. They always enjoy homemade food. Wonderful. I'll prepare the sandwiches on Saturday morning before we leave. Thank you, Mary. I know they'll love them. We should also plan some activities to do with them. Any ideas? How about playing board games or cards? I know your grandparents enjoy that. That's a great idea. I'll bring some of their favorite games with me. Maybe we can also take a walk in the park near their house if the weather is nice. I'm sure they would love that. My grandfather enjoys telling stories about the old days during walks. That will be fun. I always enjoy listening to his stories. Me too. I'll check the weather forecast to make sure it's a good day for a walk. Great. I'm really looking forward to this weekend. I am too. It will be a nice break from our usual routine, and it's always great to spend time with family. Absolutely. Thank you for inviting me, John. You're welcome, Mary. I'm glad you can join us. I'll pick you up on Saturday at 9.45 a.m. Does that sound good? That's perfect. See you then, John. See you, Mary. Have a great day. You too, John.
Goodbye. Day 14. Hi Bob, do you believe in ghosts? Hello Alice, that's an interesting question. I'm not sure, but I like to hear ghost stories. How about you? I'm not sure either, but I think they might be real. Have you ever had a scary experience? Not really, but my friend told me a story about a haunted house. Would you like to hear it? Yes, please. I love scary stories. So, my friend said that there was an old house in their town. People believed it was haunted by a ghost. That sounds spooky. What happened in the house? They said that at night, they could hear strange noises and see mysterious lights in the windows. Wow, that's creepy. Did anyone ever go inside the house? Yes, some brave people went in but they all came out scared and said they felt a cold presence. I would be too afraid to go inside. Did the ghost ever hurt anyone? No, the ghost never hurt anyone, but it seemed to want to scare people away. Why do you think the ghost wanted to scare people? Maybe it wanted to protect the house or keep a secret hidden inside. That's a good guess. Do you think all ghosts are scary, or can they be friendly too? I think there could be friendly ghosts, like the ones in some movies and books. I hope if I ever meet a ghost, it's a friendly one. What would you do if you met a ghost? I would try to talk to it and learn its story. Maybe it needs help with something. That's a nice idea. I think I would be too scared to talk to a ghost, though. That's okay, Alice. It's normal to be scared of things we don't understand. Thank you, Bob. I enjoyed our conversation about ghosts. You're welcome, Alice. It was fun talking about it. If you have any more questions or want to share a ghost story, just let me know. I will, Bob. Have a great day. You too, Alice. Take care. Day 15 Hi Bob. I've been reading a detective story lately. Have you ever read any detective stories? Hey Alice. Yes, I enjoy reading detective stories. Which one are you reading? I'm reading The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. It's so interesting. What about you? Which detective stories do you like? I like the Hercule Poirot series by Agatha Christie. They're full of twists and turns. What do you like about detective stories? I enjoy the mystery and trying to solve the case before the detective does. It's a fun challenge. How about you? I like the same things. I also enjoy the characters and the suspense in detective stories. It keeps me engaged and wanting to read more. True. Do you have a favorite detective character? Hercule Poirot is my favorite. He's intelligent, observant, and has a unique personality. What about you? I like Sherlock Holmes. His brilliant mind and unique way of solving cases fascinate me. What do you think makes a good detective story? A good detective story should have a well-crafted mystery, interesting characters, and unexpected twists. The reader should be eager to find out what happens next. What do you think? I agree with you. I also think a good detective story should challenge the reader's mind and make them think about the clues and evidence. That's true. A good detective story should make the reader feel like they're part of the investigation. Have you ever thought about writing your own detective story? I haven't, but that sounds interesting. Maybe I'll give it a try. What would your detective story be about if you were to write one? I would write about a detective who solves mysteries using modern technology and traditional investigation techniques. It would be a mix of old and new. How about you? I would write about a young detective who solves cases using her intuition and understanding of human nature. 
It would be a character-driven story. That sounds great. I would love to read your story. Maybe we can exchange stories once we're done writing them. That's a great idea. Let's do it. Good luck with your story, Bob. Thanks, Alice. Good luck with yours too. Let's catch up soon to discuss our progress. Definitely. Take care, Bob. Talk to you soon. You too, Alice. Bye for now. Day 16. Hi Bob, how's your day going? Hello Alice, it's been alright so far. How about yours? It's been okay, but I had a bit of a scare earlier. I got stuck in an elevator for a few minutes. Oh no, that sounds terrible. Are you okay now? Yes, I'm fine. It just reminded me that I have a fear of small, closed spaces. Do you have any fears like that, Bob? Well, I don't like being in tight spaces either, but I'm not too afraid of them. I can understand why being stuck in an elevator would be scary, though. It was really frightening. Thankfully, the elevator started working again quickly. But what should I do if that happens again and I'm stuck for a longer time? First, try to stay calm. Press the emergency button in the elevator to call for help. You can also use your phone to call for assistance if you have a signal. That's good advice. I did press the emergency button, but I didn't think to use my phone. It's always good to have a backup plan. Remember to take deep breaths and try to relax while you wait for help. I'll keep that in mind. Do you have any suggestions for overcoming my fear of closed spaces? One technique that might help is to gradually expose yourself to small, enclosed spaces for short periods of time. This can help you become more comfortable in those situations. That's a good idea. Maybe I'll try spending some time in small rooms or closets to help me feel less anxious. It's worth a try. You could also consider talking to a therapist or counselor about your fear. They might have some helpful strategies for overcoming it. Thanks, Bob. I'll look into that. I appreciate your help and understanding. No problem, Alice. It's important to support each other, and I'm glad I could offer some advice. If you ever need to talk about it, just let me know. Thank you, Bob. I'm lucky to have a friend like you. You're welcome, Alice. Remember, we all have fears, and it's okay to ask for help when we need it. Take care and stay strong. I will, Bob. Thanks again for your support. Have a great day. You too, Alice. Day 17 Shopping for shoes at a shoe store Hi Isabella. I heard you're looking for a new pair of shoes. Do you need any help? Hi Eric, yes, I am. I would appreciate some assistance. I'm not quite sure what type of shoes I should buy. Sure, I'm happy to help. First, let's think about what you need the shoes for. Are they for a specific event, or just everyday wear? I need some comfortable shoes for daily use. Something that can match with different outfits. Great. Let's start by looking at some sneakers and casual shoes. They're usually comfortable and versatile. What's your favorite color? I like black, white, and blue. I think those colors can easily match my wardrobe. Good choices. Here are some sneakers in those colors. You can also consider slip-ons or loafers for a more casual look. What do you think about these options? I like these black sneakers and the blue loafers. Can I try them on? Of course. Let me check if they have your size. What size do you wear? I wear a size 7. Okay, here you go. Try these on and see how they feel. 
Remember to walk around a bit to make sure they're comfortable. Thanks, Eric. These black sneakers feel great, but the blue loafers are a bit tight. Do they have a bigger size? Let me check for you. Yes, they have a size 7.5. Here, try these on. Thank you. The 7.5 fits much better. I think I'll go with the blue loafers. Great choice. They look stylish and comfortable. Is there anything else you need help with? Actually, I'm also looking for some shoe care products. What do you recommend to keep these loafers clean and in good condition? For leather shoes like these, I'd recommend using a soft cloth, leather cleaner, and leather conditioner. It's important to clean and condition your shoes regularly to keep them looking nice. Thank you for the advice, Eric. I'll pick up those shoe care products before I leave. I appreciate your help today. You're welcome, Isabella. I'm glad I could help. If you have any other questions or need assistance in the future, don't hesitate to ask. Enjoy your new shoes. Thanks, Eric. Have a great day. You too, Isabella. Take care. Day 18 Buying Jewelry at a Store Hi Isabella, I heard you wanted to buy some jewelry. Can I help you with that? Hello Eric, yes, I'm looking for a jewelry store to buy a diamond ring and some gold earrings. Do you know a good place? Of course, Isabella. There's a great jewelry store called Elegant Gems nearby. They have a wide selection of diamonds, gold, and other precious stones. That sounds perfect. Do you know how to choose a good diamond? I'm not an expert, but I know the four CS are important. Carat, cut, color, and clarity. The carat is the weight of the diamond, and the cut refers to how well the diamond is shaped. I see. What about color and clarity? Color refers to the absence of any color in a diamond. The less color, the more valuable the diamond. Clarity is about the number of imperfections in the diamond. The fewer imperfections, the more valuable the stone. Thank you, Eric. That's very helpful. What about gold? How do I know if it's good quality? Gold is measured in carats, with 24 carats being pure gold. The higher the carat number, the more gold there is in the piece of jewelry. I understand. Is it better to buy higher carat gold? It depends on your preference. Higher carat gold is more valuable but it's also softer and more susceptible to scratches. Lower carat gold is more durable but has a lower gold content. I appreciate the information. How can I make sure I'm getting a good deal at the jewelry store? It's a good idea to compare prices at different stores and ask for any available discounts. You can also ask for a certificate of authenticity for diamonds and other precious stones. Great advice, Eric. Thank you so much for your help. I feel more confident going to the jewelry store now. You're welcome, Isabella. If you have any more questions or need help, feel free to ask. Good luck with your jewelry shopping. Thank you, Eric. I'll let you know what I find. Have a great day. You too, Isabella. Enjoy your shopping. Day 19 tailor-made wedding dresses and suits. Hi Isabella, have you ever heard about tailor-made wedding dresses and suits? Hello Eric, yes, I have. A tailor-made wedding dress or suit is custom-made by a professional tailor to fit the bride or groom perfectly. It's a great option for people who want a unique and well-fitting outfit for their special day. How about you, have you ever thought about getting a tailor-made suit? I have indeed. I think it's a fantastic idea because it ensures the best fit and allows me to choose the style and fabric I like. What do you think are the advantages of a tailor-made wedding dress? 
I believe one of the main advantages is that a tailor-made wedding dress is designed specifically for the bride's body shape and size, which guarantees a perfect fit. Moreover, the bride can choose her desired style, fabric, and details to create a one-of-a-kind gown. And of course, a well-fitting dress can make the bride feel more confident and comfortable on her wedding day. Those are great points, Isabella. Do you know what the process of getting a tailor-made wedding dress or suit is like? Yes, it usually starts with a consultation between the client and the tailor. They discuss the client's ideas, preferences, and budget. Then, the tailor takes the client's measurements and helps them choose the right fabric and design. After that, the tailor creates a pattern and makes a mock-up of the dress or suit. The client comes back for a fitting, and any necessary adjustments are made. This process may be repeated a few times until the final product is perfect. That sounds like a thorough process. Is there anything people should consider before deciding on a tailor-made wedding dress or suit? Definitely. First, they should research and find a reputable tailor with experience in making wedding attire. It's also essential to consider the budget, as custom-made clothing can be more expensive than ready-made options. Additionally, they should allow enough time for the entire process, which can take several months, depending on the tailor's workload and the complexity of the design. Great advice, Isabella. Do you have any tips on how to find a reliable tailor? Sure, Eric. One way to find a good tailor is to ask for recommendations from friends or family members who have had a positive experience. Online reviews can also be helpful, as well as visiting the tailor's shop to see samples of their work. Lastly, it's a good idea to have a consultation with the tailor to discuss your needs and get a sense of their expertise and professionalism. Thank you for sharing your knowledge, Isabella. I'll keep all of that in mind when looking for a tailor for my wedding suit. You're welcome, Eric. I'm sure you'll find the perfect tailor and have a fantastic suit for your special day. If you have any more questions or need help, don't hesitate to ask. Good luck! Thanks, Isabella. I appreciate your help. Have a great day. You too, Eric. Take care. Day 20 The Beauty of Serengeti Hi Isabella. Have you ever watched a nature documentary about the Serengeti in Africa? Hello Eric. Yes, I've seen a few documentaries. It's an amazing place with lots of beautiful landscapes and wildlife. I agree. I watched one recently, and I was fascinated by the vast open plains and the variety of animals that live there. Did you know that Serengeti is home to the largest land animal migration in the world? Yes, I've heard about the Great Migration. It's when millions of wildebeest, zebras, and other animals travel in search of food and water, right? That's correct. They travel around 1,800 miles each year, facing many challenges like crossing crocodile-infested rivers and avoiding predators like lions and hyenas. Wow, that's incredible. I also read that the Serengeti ecosystem supports the highest concentration of large predators in the world. Yes, it's true. The predators are essential for maintaining the balance in the ecosystem. For instance, lions help control the population of herbivores by hunting them for food. I remember seeing a documentary about the endangered African elephants in the Serengeti. They're such intelligent and social animals. Absolutely. Elephants are known for their strong family bonds and their ability to communicate with each other. They also play a vital role in shaping the landscape by uprooting trees and creating clearings, which promotes the growth of grasslands. It's sad to think about how human activities, like poaching and habitat loss, are threatening these amazing creatures. Yes, it's crucial to raise awareness and support conservation efforts to protect the Serengeti and its inhabitants. Many organizations are working hard to preserve this unique ecosystem. 
that's true. And ecotourism can also contribute to conservation by providing funds for wildlife protection and supporting local communities. Absolutely. Visiting the Serengeti on a responsible safari can be a life-changing experience, offering a chance to witness the beauty of nature while supporting its preservation. I'd love to visit the Serengeti one day and see its breathtaking landscapes and incredible wildlife with my own eyes. Me too, Isabella. It's definitely on my bucket list. Until then, we can continue learning about it and sharing our knowledge with others to help promote conservation. That's a great idea, Eric. Let's keep exploring the wonders of our planet and do our part to protect it. I couldn't agree more, Isabella. Let's keep our passion for nature alive and inspire others to join us in our journey. Day 21 A casual chat about Formula One racing. Hi Isabella. I heard that you're a big fan of Formula One racing. Can you tell me more about it? Hello Eric. Sure, I'd love to. Formula One is the highest class of single-seater auto racing. It's an international championship with races called Grand Prix held in various countries. That sounds interesting. How does a typical Formula One race weekend work? Well, a race weekend usually consists of practice sessions, a qualifying session, and the race itself. The practice sessions help teams and drivers prepare and test their cars, while the qualifying session determines the starting positions for the race. I see. And how do they determine the winner of a Formula One race? The winner is the driver who finishes the race in the shortest time. Points are awarded to the top 10 finishers, and these points contribute to the overall championship standings for both drivers and teams. Can you tell me more about the cars used in Formula One racing? Sure. Formula One cars are highly specialized machines, with advanced aerodynamics, lightweight materials, and powerful engines. Teams spend millions of dollars each year to develop and improve their cars. Wow, that's impressive. How about the drivers? What skills do they need to succeed in Formula One racing? Formula One drivers need to have excellent physical fitness, quick reflexes, and great concentration. They also need a deep understanding of the car's mechanics and strategy to make split-second decisions during the race. It sounds like a challenging sport. What are some of the most famous teams and drivers in Formula One history? There have been many legendary teams and drivers. Some of the most famous teams include Ferrari, McLaren, and Mercedes, while iconic drivers include Ayrton Senna, Michael Schumacher, and Lewis Hamilton. I've heard of some of them. Can you tell me about a memorable Formula One race or moment that you've seen? One memorable race was the 2008 Brazilian Grand Prix, where Lewis Hamilton won his first world championship. He overtook another driver on the last lap, in the last corner, securing enough points to win the championship. It was an incredible finish. That sounds amazing. I think I'll start watching Formula One races. Any tips for a beginner like me? Just enjoy the races and try to learn more about the teams, drivers, and circuits. There's a lot of strategy and technology involved, so the more you learn, the more exciting it becomes. I'd also recommend following Formula One news and joining fan discussions online. Thank you, Isabella. You've given me a great introduction to Formula One racing. I can't wait to watch my first race. You're welcome, Eric. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you have any questions or want to discuss the races, don't hesitate to reach out. Have fun! Day 22 A Journey to the Wild West Hi Isabella, have you ever heard about the Wild West and Cowboys? Hi Eric, yes, I've heard a little bit about them. Weren't they people who lived in the western part of the United States a long time ago? That's correct. 
The Wild West refers to the period and region in the 19th century when settlers moved to the western part of the United States. Cowboys were people who worked with cattle and horses during that time. Oh, I see. What was life like for cowboys in the Wild West? Life was tough and challenging. Cowboys had to work long hours, taking care of cattle and horses. They also had to face harsh weather conditions and sometimes even dangerous animals or outlaws. Wow, that sounds exciting but also difficult. Did they have any special skills or abilities? Yes, they did. Cowboys were known for their excellent horse riding skills and their ability to use a lasso, which is a long rope with a loop at the end. They used the lasso to catch cattle and control them. That's interesting. Were there any famous cowboys or outlaws from the Wild West? There were many famous figures, both real and fictional, like Billy the Kid, Wyatt Earp, and Jesse James. They were known for their gunslinging abilities and adventures. I've heard some of those names in movies and books. Did cowboys have any specific clothing or style? Yes, they did. Cowboys typically wore wide-brimmed hats, bandanas, boots, and chaps to protect their legs while riding. They also had unique accessories, such as a gun belt and holster. It seems like a fascinating time in history. How did the Wild West come to an end? The Wild West era ended as more people moved to the western part of the United States, and law enforcement became more organized. Also, the expansion of railroads and technology made it easier for people to travel and communicate, which led to a more settled society. That makes sense. It's amazing how much the world has changed since then. Indeed, it is. The Wild West is a significant part of American history and has influenced popular culture in many ways, such as movies, books, and even fashion. Thank you for sharing all this information, Eric. I've learned a lot about the Wild West and cowboys today. You're welcome, Isabella. I'm glad you found it interesting. If you have any more questions, don't hesitate to ask. I definitely will, Eric. Have a great day. Day 23 A memorable trip to Tokyo. Hi Isabella, I heard you just got back from your vacation in Tokyo. How was it? Hey Eric. Yes, I did. It was amazing. The city is so beautiful and full of life. That sounds great. What was your favorite part of the trip? It's hard to pick just one, but I think visiting the historic temples and experiencing the Japanese tea ceremony were my favorite parts. I've always wanted to see a traditional tea ceremony. Can you tell me more about it? Of course. The tea ceremony is a Japanese cultural activity that involves the preparation and presentation of matcha, a powdered green tea. It's a very calming and spiritual experience. That sounds fascinating. And what about the temples? Which ones did you visit? I visited a few, but the most memorable ones were Sensoji and Meiji Shrine. They were so peaceful and had such a rich history. I've heard about Sensoji. It's one of the oldest temples in Tokyo, right? Yes, that's correct. It's an ancient Buddhist temple, and it's very popular among tourists and locals alike. And how about the food? I know Japanese cuisine is famous for its sushi and ramen. Oh, the food was incredible. I tried sushi at the famous Tsukiji fish market and had some delicious ramen in Shinjuku. I also tried other dishes like tempura and okonomiyaki. That all sounds so delicious. What about shopping? Did you buy any souvenirs or gifts? I did. I bought some traditional Japanese items like kimono, folding fans, and tea sets. There are so many interesting shops and markets in Tokyo. I can imagine. Did you also get to experience the famous cherry blossoms? 
Unfortunately, I missed the cherry blossom season, but I still enjoyed the beautiful parks and gardens around the city. It still sounds like you had a fantastic trip. I would love to visit Tokyo someday. You definitely should, Eric. It's such an amazing city with so much to see and do. I can't wait to go back. Thanks for sharing your experience, Isabella. I'll definitely add Tokyo to my travel bucket list. You're welcome, Eric. If you need any tips or recommendations when you plan your trip, just let me know. I appreciate that, Isabella. I'll definitely reach out to you when the time comes. Thanks again. No problem, Eric. Have a great day. Day 24 Planning a Hawaii Vacation Hey Isabella, have you ever been to Hawaii? Hi Eric, no, I haven't. I've always wanted to go, though. How about you? I went there once with my family when I was younger, and I loved it. I was thinking of going there again for my upcoming vacation. Would you like to join me? That sounds amazing, Eric. I'd love to. What should we do to plan our trip? First, let's decide on the dates for our vacation. When are you available? First, let's decide on the dates for our vacation. When are you available? July works for me too. Now, let's choose which island or islands we want to visit. There are several options like Oahu, Maui, Kauai, and the Big Island. I've heard great things about Maui. What do you think? Maui is a fantastic choice. It has beautiful beaches and the famous road to Hana. We can also visit Haleakala National Park. That sounds perfect. What's the next step? We should book our flights and accommodation. I recommend looking for deals online. Websites like Expedia or Booking.com often have good offers. Great idea. How long should we stay in Hawaii? I think a week or 10 days would be enough to explore Maui and relax on the beaches. What do you think? That sounds good to me. Once we book our flights and accommodation, what else do we need to plan? We should make a list of activities and sites we want to see. For example, snorkeling, surfing lessons, visiting waterfalls, or attending a traditional Hawaiian luau. I'm so excited. I've always wanted to try surfing. We should also research some good restaurants and local food to try. Absolutely. Hawaii has amazing food. We must try poke, which is a delicious raw fish salad, and loco moco, a dish made with rice, a hamburger patty, and gravy. Yum. I can't wait to try all the local dishes. What else should we pack for our trip? Make sure to bring sunscreen, beachwear, sunglasses, and a hat. We'll also need comfortable shoes for exploring and hiking. Thanks, Eric. I'm looking forward to our Hawaii vacation. Let's keep in touch to plan everything. Sounds good, Isabella. I'll start researching more about Maui and the activities we can do. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Eric. Have a great day. Day 25 Hello Tom. Do you like horses? Yes, I like horses. They are beautiful animals. Have you ever ridden a horse? Yes, I have. I took some horse riding lessons a few years ago. It was fun. How about you? I have never ridden a horse, but I would like to try it someday. Are horse riding lessons expensive? It depends on the place, but usually, they are not too expensive. You can find a good horse riding school and learn for a reasonable price. That's great to hear. I will look for a horse riding school near me. Do you still ride horses? Not as often as I would like, but I try to ride a horse once in a while. It's a great way to relax and enjoy nature. I agree. 
Horses are amazing creatures. How long does it take to learn horse riding? It's different for everyone, but with regular lessons and practice, you can learn the basics in a few months. That's not too long. I am excited to start learning. Have you ever watched a horse race? Yes, I have been to a horse race once. It was very exciting. The horses were running so fast. Have you ever been to a horse race? No, I haven't. But I have seen horse races on TV. It looks very interesting. It is. You should go to a horse race someday. It's a great experience. I will definitely do that. Thank you for telling me about horse riding and horse racing, Mary. You're welcome, Tom. I hope you enjoy learning horse riding and watching horse races. Day 26 Hello, my dear husband. Today is our 10th wedding anniversary. Can you believe it? Wow, time flies. It feels like just yesterday when we got married. I am so happy to celebrate this special day with you. Me too. We are in New York now. I heard about a famous restaurant here. Let's have dinner there tonight. Great idea. I love trying new places. What is the name of the restaurant? It is called The Elegant Table. People say it has very delicious food. That sounds perfect. I am excited to try their dishes. Shall we make a reservation? Yes, let's do that. I will call them now to book a table for us. Later, at the restaurant. This place is beautiful. I am glad we chose it for our anniversary dinner. I agree. The atmosphere is so romantic. I am sure we will have a wonderful time tonight. What would you like to eat? I think I will try the grilled salmon. It sounds very tasty. How about you? I will have the steak with mashed potatoes. I love a good steak. Good choices. Let's also order a bottle of wine to celebrate our special day. I agree. Let's choose a nice red wine to go with our meal. During the meal. The food is amazing. I am so happy we came here. Yes, it is really delicious. We should come here again in the future. Definitely. Do you remember our first date? We were so young and nervous. I do remember. It was a beautiful summer evening and we went to that little Italian restaurant. Yes, that's right. We talked for hours and laughed a lot. It was the beginning of our wonderful journey together. I am grateful for all the years we have spent together. We have had our ups and downs, but our love has always been strong. I feel the same way. I am looking forward to spending many more happy years with you. Happy anniversary, my love. Happy anniversary to you too. Cheers to us and our beautiful life together. The couple continued to enjoy their meal, reminiscing about their past and looking forward to the future. They left the restaurant with full hearts and happy memories of their 10th wedding anniversary celebration. Day 27 Hello, Sarah. How are you today? Hi, John. I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. I heard you visited London recently. How was it? Yes, I did. It was great. The city is very beautiful. Have you been there? No, I haven't. I would love to go someday. What did you like the most about London? I loved the museums and parks. The British Museum was amazing. You should visit it if you go to London. That sounds interesting. I like history a lot. What else did you see? I also went to the Tower of London. 
It's a famous castle with a long history. Oh, I've heard of it. Did you see the crown jewels? Yes, I did. They are very beautiful and valuable. It was fascinating to see them. I can imagine. What about the parks? Which one did you like the most? I loved Hyde Park. It's a big park in the center of London. People can walk, ride bikes, or just relax there. That sounds nice. I love spending time in parks. Did you try any traditional British food? Yes, I tried fish and chips. It's a popular dish in London. It was very tasty. I like fish and chips too. How was the weather during your trip? It was a bit rainy, but not too cold. London is known for its rain, so I expected it. True. Did you use public transportation while you were there? Yes, I used the underground, also called the tube. It's very convenient for getting around the city. I've heard it's one of the oldest subway systems in the world. Yes, that's right. It's very interesting. I also took a ride on a double-decker bus. It was a fun experience. I would love to try that too. How long did you stay in London? I stayed for a week. There's so much to see and do. I hope to go back again someday. I hope I can visit London soon. Your trip sounds amazing. Thanks for sharing your experience with me. You're welcome, John. I'm sure you'll love London when you visit. Let's meet again soon to talk more. Yes, let's do that. Take care, Sarah. See you soon. You too, John. Goodbye. Day 28 Hi, do you know anything about social life in medieval Europe? Hi. Yes, I know a little. Would you like to learn about it? Yes, please. What was it like during that time? In medieval Europe, people lived in small villages and towns. Life was simple. What did people do for work? Most people were farmers. They grew food for their families and the village. Did they have schools? Not like today. Only a few people went to school. Most people learned from their parents or at the church. What about the kings and queens? They lived in castles and had many servants. They ruled the land and made the laws. How did people have fun? They had festivals and fairs. They played games, danced, and watched plays. Did people travel a lot? No, not much. Travel was difficult and dangerous. Most people stayed near their homes. What kind of clothes did they wear? They wore simple clothes made from wool and linen. Only the rich people wore fancy clothes. Did they have any special holidays? Yes, they celebrated religious holidays like Christmas and Easter. They also had harvest festivals. What did people eat? They ate bread, vegetables, and sometimes meat. They drank water, milk, and ale. How did they get married? Marriages were often arranged by the families. The bride and groom would have a simple ceremony at the church. What about knights? Did they really fight in battles? Yes, knights were trained to fight and protect the kingdom. They wore armor and rode horses. That's so interesting. Thank you for telling me about medieval Europe. You're welcome. It's a fascinating time in history. If you want to learn more, you can read books or watch documentaries. Day 29 Hi. How are you today? Hi. I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thank you. What do you like to do in your free time? 
I like to watch TV and use the internet. How about you? I like to listen to the radio and read books. What is your favorite TV show? My favorite TV show is The Amazing Race. It's very exciting. Do you have a favorite radio station? Yes, I like to listen to classic FM. They play classical music. Have you ever listened to classical music? Yes, I have. It's nice, but I prefer pop music. What do you like to read on the internet? I like to read the news and watch funny videos. What kind of videos do you like to watch? I like to watch cooking videos. I love to learn new recipes. Do you like to cook? Yes, I do. I enjoy making different dishes. What is your favorite food? My favorite food is pizza. What is your favorite book? My favorite book is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Have you read any of the Harry Potter books? No, I haven't. But I watched the movies. They were great. What kind of books do you like to read? I like to read mystery and adventure books. What is your favorite website? My favorite website is YouTube. There are so many interesting videos there. Do you use social media? Yes, I use Facebook and Instagram. I like to stay connected with my friends. What about you? I use Twitter and Snapchat. It's fun to share pictures and updates. Have you ever listened to a podcast? Yes, I have. I like listening to podcasts about history and science. Do you have a favorite podcast? I don't have a favorite one, but I enjoy listening to podcasts about sports. Do you play any sports? Yes, I play soccer and basketball. How about you? I play tennis and swim. Do you watch sports on TV? Sometimes I watch soccer games. Do you have a favorite team? My favorite team is Barcelona. They play really well. What do you like to do on weekends? On weekends, I like to go for a walk in the park and watch movies. What about you? I like to visit my family and play video games. Do you have a favorite movie? My favorite movie is The Lion King. It's a great animation. Have you seen it? Yes, I have. I love that movie too. It's so much fun. What do you like to do when it's raining outside? When it's raining, I like to stay at home and drink hot chocolate. What do you like to do? I like to watch movies or play board games with my family. Do you have a favorite board game? My favorite board game is Monopoly. It's very entertaining. What is your favorite season? My favorite season is summer. I love going to the beach. How about you? I like spring. The weather is nice and flowers start to bloom. It's beautiful. Do you have any pets? No, I don't have any pets. But I would love to have a dog. Do you have any pets? Yes, I have a cat named Whiskers. She's very cute. What would you name your dog if you had one? I would name my dog Buddy. Day 30. Hi, how are you today? Hi, I'm good, thanks. How about you? I'm fine too. I was thinking about my small house and big family. Oh, that's nice. How many people are in your family? There are eight people in my family. What about your family? I have a small family. There are only four of us. That's nice too. It must be quiet at your home. Yes, it is. What is it like to have a big family? It is fun but sometimes noisy. We have many brothers and sisters. Do you all live in the small house together? Yes, we do. We share rooms and help each other with chores. 
That sounds nice. Do you have family dinners together? Yes, we do. We eat and talk about our day. I would like to have a big family dinner one day. You should come to our house for dinner. We can have a big dinner with your family too. That sounds great. When can we do that? How about next Saturday? We can have a big dinner together. Perfect. We will bring some food too. Great. We can make a big meal with different dishes. I will tell my family about it. They will be excited. I'm sure my family will be happy to meet your family. I can't wait for next Saturday. It will be so much fun. Yes, it will be. Let's meet at my house at 6 p.m. Okay, see you then. Goodbye. Goodbye, see you next Saturday. Day 1 Hello, my friend. How are you today? Hi, Jack. I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. What did you do yesterday? Yesterday, I went to the park with my family. We had a picnic. And you? I watched a movie at home. It was fun. What was the movie about? It was about a man who travels in time to save the world. That sounds interesting. Did you like it? Yes, I liked it very much. It was exciting. I want to watch it too. Can you tell me the name of the movie? Of course. The name of the movie is Time Hero. Thank you, Jack. I will watch it soon. You're welcome, Emily. What are your plans for the weekend? This weekend, I will go shopping with my friends. We want to buy new clothes. What about you? I will visit my grandparents in the countryside. I haven't seen them for a long time. That's nice. I'm sure they will be happy to see you. Yes, I think so too. I miss them very much. I hope you have a great time with your grandparents. Thank you, Emily. I hope you have fun shopping with your friends. Thanks, Jack. I'm sure we will. By the way, have you tried the new restaurant near our school? No, I haven't. Is it good? Yes. It's very good. They serve delicious food. We should go there together someday. That's a great idea, Jack. Let's plan it for next week. Sure, I'll check my schedule and let you know. Perfect. I can't wait to try the new restaurant. Me too, Emily. I think you'll like it. I'm sure I will. Thank you for the suggestion. You're welcome. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. You too, Jack. See you later. Goodbye, Emily. Have a nice day. Goodbye, Jack. You too. Day 2 Hi, Sarah. Have you ever been on a safari tour? Hello, John. No, I haven't. What is a safari tour? A safari tour is a trip where you can see wild animals in their natural habitat. It's really exciting. That sounds interesting. Where can we go for a safari tour? We can go to Africa. There are many countries with beautiful safari parks, like Kenya and Tanzania. 
Wow, I would love to go to Africa. What animals can we see there? We can see lions, elephants, giraffes, zebras, and many more animals. That's amazing. How long is a safari tour? It can be from a few days to a couple of weeks, depending on what you want to see and do. I think a week would be enough for me. What do we need to bring for the safari tour? We should bring comfortable clothes, a hat, sunscreen, insect repellent, and a good camera to take pictures of the animals. Great! Do we need to book the safari tour in advance? Yes, it's better to book it a few months before the trip, so we can find the best deals and make sure everything is arranged. I can't wait to go on a safari tour. What else can we do in Africa? We can visit local villages, learn about their culture, and try delicious African food. That sounds like a fantastic experience. I'm really looking forward to it. Me too, Sarah. I'm sure we'll have an unforgettable time on our safari tour in Africa. Let's start planning our trip. Thank you for telling me about safari tours, John. You're welcome, Sarah. I'm happy to share this adventure with you. Day 3 Hi, Mary. I'm looking for a place to rent. Do you have any suggestions? Hi, John. Sure, I can help. What kind of place are you looking for? A house, an apartment, or a summer villa? I think an apartment would be best for me. What do you think? That's a good choice. Apartments are usually cheaper than houses and villas. How many rooms do you need? I need at least two rooms, one for myself and one for my office. What's your budget for the rent? I can spend up to $1,000 per month. That should be enough to find a nice apartment. What area do you want to live in? I'd like to live close to the city center, but not too close. I prefer a quiet neighborhood. I understand. Let me check online to see what's available in that area. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate your help. No problem, John. I found an apartment that might be perfect for you. It's a two-bedroom apartment, located in a quiet neighborhood, and the rent is $950 per month. That sounds interesting. Can you give me more information about it? Sure. The apartment is on the second floor of a building with an elevator. It has a balcony, a kitchen, and a bathroom with a bathtub. That's great. I like having a balcony. Is it furnished? Yes, it is. The apartment has a bed, a sofa, a dining table, and a desk. Wonderful. How can I contact the owner? I can give you the phone number. Would you like to call them now? Yes, please. I want to arrange a visit as soon as possible. Here is the phone number, 555-123-4567. Good luck, John. I hope you like the apartment. Thank you so much for your help, Mary. I will call the owner right away. You're welcome, John. Let me know how it goes. If you need any more help, just ask. I will, Mary. Have a great day. You too, John. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mary. Hi, I'm looking for some clothes for my son. He's five years old and needs some new outfits for school. Sure. We have a great selection of clothes for boys in that age range. What kind of things are you looking for? I need some pants and shirts that are durable and easy to move around in. He's a very active kid. I see. We have some great options that would fit the bill. How about these khaki pants and this striped t-shirt? Those look great. Do you have any sweaters or jackets for cooler weather? Yes, 
We have some nice sweaters and light jackets that would be perfect for fall. How about this gray cardigan and this windbreaker? Those would be perfect. And what about shoes? We have a variety of sneakers and boots that are both comfortable and stylish. Would you like to take a look? Yes, please. These black sneakers look great. Those are one of our most popular styles. They're also made with durable materials that will last a long time. That's great. I think we have everything we need. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. Don't hesitate to let us know if you need any more assistance. Have a great day. Day 4 Hey Bob, have you ever been on a cruise before? Hi Alice, no, I haven't. How about you? I've been on a cruise once, and it was a great experience. I was thinking about going on a Caribbean cruise with Royal Caribbean. Have you heard of them? Yes, I have. They are a popular cruise company. What can you tell me about their Caribbean cruises? They offer various itineraries and visit many beautiful islands in the Caribbean. The ships are incredible, with lots of activities, entertainment, and dining options. That sounds like fun. How long do these cruises usually last? The cruises can range from a few days to a couple of weeks, depending on the itinerary you choose. What kind of activities can I expect on the ship? There are swimming pools, water slides, rock climbing walls, theaters, and even ice skating rinks on some ships. They also have various clubs and bars for nighttime entertainment. Wow, that sounds amazing. Are there any special events or theme nights on the cruises? Yes, they often have themed parties, like pirate night or formal night. They also have live shows, comedy acts, and musical performances. What about the ports of call? What kind of activities can I do on the islands? There are many excursions you can book, like snorkeling, beach trips, historical tours, or even ziplining. You can also explore the islands on your own if you prefer. That sounds exciting. How do I book a cruise with Royal Caribbean? You can either book through their website or contact a travel agent. They often have special promotions and discounts, so it's a good idea to check their website regularly. Thanks for the information, Alice. I'll definitely consider taking a Caribbean cruise with Royal Caribbean. You're welcome, Bob. I'm sure you'll have an amazing time if you decide to go. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Thank you, Alice. I'll let you know if I need any more help. Have a great day. You too, Bob. Enjoy planning your trip. Day 5 Hey Isabella, have you heard about the Maldives? It's a beautiful group of islands with luxury resorts. Hi Eric. Yes, I've heard about the Maldives. It's a popular vacation destination, right? Exactly. I was thinking, wouldn't it be great if we could plan a 15-day trip to a luxury resort in the Maldives with our school friends? That sounds amazing. I've always wanted to visit the Maldives. How do we start planning this trip? First, we need to decide which resort we want to stay at. There are so many to choose from. Maybe we can ask our friends for suggestions. I'm sure some of them have been to the Maldives before. Great idea. We can create a group chat and ask everyone for their input. After we decide on a resort, we'll need to book our flights and accommodations. It might be a good idea to start looking for deals now. Yes, I'll start searching for flights and resort packages. We should also decide on the dates for our trip. How about we make a list of activities we want to do while we're in the Maldives? That way, we can plan our days accordingly. That's a smart idea. 
There are so many activities to choose from, like snorkeling, scuba diving, and island hopping. Don't forget about relaxing on the beach and enjoying the beautiful sunsets. Of course. We'll also need to decide on a budget for our trip. Yes, we should take into account the cost of flights, accommodations, activities, and meals. Once we have a rough budget, we can share it with our friends and see if everyone is comfortable with it. I think it's important to be flexible with our plans, so everyone can have a good time. I agree. Let's get started on planning this amazing vacation. I can't wait. This will be a trip to remember. Thanks for suggesting it, Eric. You're welcome, Isabella. I'm sure it will be an unforgettable experience for all of us. Let's make it happen. Day 6 Hi Isabella, have you ever thought about visiting the ancient centers of the Aztec and Maya civilizations? Hello Eric, yes, I've always been fascinated by their history and culture. Have you ever been there? I haven't, but I've been doing some research and I think it would be an amazing experience. Would you like to plan a trip together? That sounds like a great idea. Where should we start? Well, we could begin by visiting the ancient city of Teotihuacan in Mexico. It was an important center for both the Aztec and Maya civilizations. I've heard of Teotihuacan. It has the famous Pyramid of the Sun and the Pyramid of the Moon, right? Yes, that's correct. We could also visit the Templo Mayor in Mexico City, which was the main temple of the Aztec civilization. I'd love to see that. What about the Maya civilization? Where can we go to learn more about them? We could visit Chichen Itza in Mexico, which is one of the most famous Maya sites. It has the Cuculcan Pyramid, also known as El Castillo. That sounds fascinating. Are there any other important Maya sites we should consider visiting? Definitely. We could visit Palenque and Tulum in Mexico, Tikal in Guatemala, and Copan in Honduras. Each of these sites has its own unique history and architecture. Wow, there are so many places to explore. How should we plan our trip? I suggest we create an itinerary, starting with the sites we want to visit most. We can then research transportation options and accommodations near each site. That's a good plan. We should also learn more about the history and culture of the Aztec and Maya civilizations before our trip. I agree. We could read some books, watch documentaries, and maybe even take a course on their history and culture. I think that would really enrich our experience. Let's start planning and make sure we have enough time to fully appreciate each site. Absolutely. I'm really excited about this trip, Isabella. I think we're going to have an unforgettable experience. I agree, Eric. I can't wait to explore the ancient centers of the Aztec and Maya civilizations with you. Day 7 Hello, Lisa. Have you ever been on a ship before? Hi, Tom. Yes, I have. I went on a cruise last year. How about you? That's cool. I'm a sailor, so I spend a lot of time on ships. Wow, that must be an exciting job. What kind of places do you visit? It is. I've visited many countries, but my favorite trip was when we sailed near a tropical island. That sounds amazing. What was the island like? It was beautiful. The island had white sandy beaches, crystal clear water, and tall palm trees. I can imagine how relaxing it must be to spend time there. Did you have a chance to explore the island? Yes, we had some free time, so we went ashore and explored the island. We found a small village with friendly people. What did you do in the village? We walked around 
talked to the locals, and tried some delicious food at a small restaurant. That sounds like a great experience. What was your favorite part of the trip? My favorite part was watching the sunset on the beach. It was the most beautiful sunset I've ever seen. I wish I could see that too. Did you take any pictures? Yes, I did. I can show you some photos if you'd like. I would love to see them. Maybe you can inspire me to plan my next vacation. Sure, I'll bring my photo album next time we meet. That would be great. Thank you, Tom. I'm looking forward to seeing your pictures. You're welcome, Lisa. I hope you'll enjoy them as much as I did. Have a nice day. You too, Tom. Goodbye. Day 8 Hi Bob, did you go camping in the mountains last weekend? Hello Alice, yes, I did. It was a lot of fun. How about you? Have you ever gone camping? No, I haven't. Can you tell me more about it? What do you do when you go camping? Sure, Alice. First, we choose a nice spot in the mountains to set up our tents. Then, we go for a hike and explore the area. That sounds exciting. What do you do in the evening? In the evening, we usually make a campfire. We sit around the fire, talk, and sometimes we even play the guitar and sing songs. Wow, that sounds lovely. I would like to try camping one day. What do I need to bring for a camping trip? You'll need a tent, a sleeping bag, warm clothes, food, water, a flashlight, and a first aid kit. Thanks, Bob. How do you make a campfire safely? You need to find a clear spot away from trees and grass. Dig a small pit and surround it with rocks. Put dry leaves, twigs, and larger pieces of wood in the pit, and then use a match or lighter to start the fire. That's good to know. Do you have any other tips for camping? Always make sure to clean up after yourself and leave no trace. Be careful with your food, as it can attract animals. And always let someone know where you're going and when you'll be back. Thank you for the advice, Bob. It sounds like a great experience. I hope to go camping soon. You're welcome, Alice. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you have any questions or need help planning your trip, just let me know. I will, Bob. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. You too, Alice. Happy camping. Day 9 Hi Bob, how are you today? Hello Alice, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine too, thanks. I wanted to tell you about my trip to Dubai. Have you ever been there? No, I haven't been to Dubai. How was your trip? It was amazing. I stayed at the Hotel Burj Al Arab. It's a very beautiful and famous hotel. Wow, that sounds great. What did you do in Dubai? I visited many places. I went to the mall, saw the big aquarium, and went up to the top of the Burj Khalifa. The Burj Khalifa? Is that the tallest building in the world? Yes, it is. The view from the top was incredible. You can see the whole city from there. That must have been exciting. Did you go to the beach? Yes, I went to Jumeirah Beach. The water was warm and the sand was soft. I had a great time. It sounds like you had a fantastic trip. What about the food in Dubai? The food was delicious. I tried many different dishes, like kebabs and shawarma. There were also many international restaurants. I've heard that Dubai is famous for its shopping. Did you buy anything special? 
yes, I went to the gold souk and bought some gold jewelry. There were also many big malls with lots of shops. I would love to go to Dubai someday. Do you have any tips for me if I go? Just make sure to dress respectfully, drink lots of water, and be prepared for the heat. And don't forget to take lots of pictures. Thank you for the advice, Alice. I hope I can visit Dubai soon. You're welcome, Bob. I'm sure you'll have a great time. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you, Alice. Have a nice day. You too, Bob. Bob. Take care. Day 10 Hi Bob, how was your day? Hello Alice, my day was good, thank you. How about yours? It was fine, thanks. I saw a family spending time together at home. It was interesting to see what each person was doing. That sounds nice. What were they doing? The father was working on the computer, the mother was reading a book on the sofa, the daughter was studying on the floor, and their cat was playing with a ball of yarn. It sounds like a cozy evening at home. Did you know the family? No, I didn't. I just saw them through the window as I was walking by. I thought it was a lovely scene. Yes, it sounds like a nice way to spend an evening. Do you like spending time at home with your family, Alice? I do, Bob. I enjoy reading books, watching movies, and playing games with my family. How about you? I like spending time with my family too. We often cook dinner together and chat about our day. That's nice. What are some activities you enjoy doing with your family? We like going for walks, having picnics in the park, and sometimes going to the movies. Those are great activities. Do you have any pets, Bob? Yes, I have a dog named Buddy. He loves playing fetch and going for walks with us. How about you, Alice? I have a cat named Whiskers. She is very playful and loves chasing after toys. It's fun to have pets at home, isn't it? Yes, it is. They bring joy and companionship to our lives. I agree. It's nice to have someone to care for and who cares for you in return. That's true, Bob. Well, I should get going. It was nice talking to you about families and pets. It was nice talking to you too, Alice. Have a great day. Day 11 Hi, Mary. I'm going to take the metro today. Have you ever used it before? Hi, John. Yes, I have used the metro many times. Where are you going? I need to go to the city center for a meeting. Can you help me understand how to use the metro? Of course, John. First, you need to find the nearest metro station. I think there is one close to my house. What do I do when I get there? When you arrive at the station, you need to buy a ticket. There are ticket machines where you can purchase one. How much does a ticket cost? A single ticket usually costs around $2. You can also buy a daily or weekly pass if you plan to use the metro often. I think I'll just buy a single ticket for now. What do I do after buying the ticket? Once you have your ticket, you need to find the correct platform. There will be signs to guide you. How do I know which train to take? The trains are usually labeled with their destination. Make sure to check the metro map to see which line you need to take. Okay, I understand. What happens when the train arrives? When the train arrives, wait for the doors to open and let passengers exit first. Then, you can board the train and find a seat or a place to stand. How do I know when to get off the train? 
There will be announcements for each station. Listen carefully and get off the train when you hear your destination. Thank you, Mary. That helps a lot. Is there anything else I should know? Just remember to keep your ticket with you while you're on the train. Sometimes there are ticket inspectors who will check. I'll make sure to do that. Thanks again for your help, Mary. You're welcome, John. Have a great trip. Let me know if you have any questions. I will, Mary. Have a nice day. You too, John. Goodbye. Day 12 Hi, Sarah. I heard you are a photographer. Can you give me some advice? Hi, Mike. Sure, I'd be happy to help. What do you need advice on? I'm planning a trip to the Swiss Alps, and I want to take great photos. What kind of camera should I use? That sounds like an amazing trip. A DSLR or mirrorless camera would be best for high-quality photos. Do you have a budget for the camera? I can spend up to $1,000. What brand do you recommend? For that budget, I suggest looking at Nikon or Canon cameras. They are both reliable and have a good range of lenses. Thanks, Sarah. What kind of lenses should I get for landscape photography? A wide-angle lens is great for capturing the beautiful scenery in the Swiss Alps. You might also want a telephoto lens for distant subjects. That's very helpful. Should I take a tripod with me? Yes, a tripod is a must for landscape photography. It helps keep your camera steady and allows you to take sharp photos. Great. Any tips on the best time to take photos in the mountains? The golden hour, which is shortly after sunrise or before sunset, is the best time for taking photos. The light is soft and warm, which can create stunning images. I'll keep that in mind. What about clothing? I've never been to the Swiss Alps before. Make sure to dress warmly and in layers. The weather can change quickly in the mountains. Waterproof boots, a hat, and gloves are also important. Thanks for the advice, Sarah. How can I improve my photography skills before the trip? Practice is key. Spend some time getting familiar with your camera and its settings. You can also watch online tutorials or take a photography class. I'll do that. One more question. How do I keep my camera safe during the trip? Use a good quality camera bag with padding to protect your camera and lenses. Also, keep your camera dry and avoid extreme temperatures. Thank you so much for your help, Sarah. I can't wait to take amazing photos in the Swiss Alps. You're welcome, Mike. I'm sure you'll have a great time. Don't forget to share your photos with me when you return. I definitely will. Have a great day, Sarah. You too, Mike. Enjoy your trip. Goodbye. Goodbye, Sarah. Day 13 Hi, Mary. How are you today? Hi, John. I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm good, thanks. I was thinking of visiting my grandparents this weekend. Would you like to join me? That sounds lovely. I haven't seen them in a long time. What time are we leaving? I was thinking of leaving around 10 a.m. on Saturday. Is that okay with you? That works for me. How long does it take to get to their house? It's about a two-hour drive. We can have lunch with them and spend the afternoon together. That sounds perfect. What should we bring with us? I think we should bring some flowers for my grandmother and maybe some snacks for the road. Great idea. I can make some sandwiches for the trip. Do you think your grandparents would like that? I'm sure they would appreciate it. 
They always enjoy homemade food. Wonderful. I'll prepare the sandwiches on Saturday morning before we leave. Thank you, Mary. I know they'll love them. We should also plan some activities to do with them. Any ideas? How about playing board games or cards? I know your grandparents enjoy that. That's a great idea. I'll bring some of their favorite games with me. Maybe we can also take a walk in the park near their house if the weather is nice. I'm sure they would love that. My grandfather enjoys telling stories about the old days during walks. That will be fun. I always enjoy listening to his stories. Me too. I'll check the weather forecast to make sure it's a good day for a walk. Great. I'm really looking forward to this weekend. I am too. It will be a nice break from our usual routine, and it's always great to spend time with family. Absolutely. Thank you for inviting me, John. You're welcome, Mary. I'm glad you can join us. I'll pick you up on Saturday at 9.45 a.m. Does that sound good? That's perfect. See you then, John. See you, Mary. Have a great day. You too, John. Goodbye. Day 14 Hi Bob, do you believe in ghosts? Hello Alice, that's an interesting question. I'm not sure, but I like to hear ghost stories. How about you? I'm not sure either, but I think they might be real. Have you ever had a scary experience? Not really, but my friend told me a story about a haunted house. Would you like to hear it? Yes, please. I love scary stories. So, my friend said that there was an old house in their town. People believed it was haunted by a ghost. That sounds spooky. What happened in the house? They said that at night, they could hear strange noises and see mysterious lights in the windows. Wow, that's creepy. Did anyone ever go inside the house? Yes, some brave people went in but they all came out scared and said they felt a cold presence. I would be too afraid to go inside. Did the ghost ever hurt anyone? No, the ghost never hurt anyone, but it seemed to want to scare people away. Why do you think the ghost wanted to scare people? Maybe it wanted to protect the house or keep a secret hidden inside. That's a good guess. Do you think all ghosts are scary, or can they be friendly too? I think there could be friendly ghosts, like the ones in some movies and books. I hope if I ever meet a ghost, it's a friendly one. What would you do if you met a ghost? I would try to talk to it and learn its story. Maybe it needs help with something. That's a nice idea. I think I would be too scared to talk to a ghost, though. That's okay, Alice. It's normal to be scared of things we don't understand. Thank you, Bob. I enjoyed our conversation about ghosts. You're welcome, Alice. It was fun talking about it. If you have any more questions or want to share a ghost story, just let me know. I will, Bob. Have a great day. You too, Alice. Take care. Day 15 Hi Bob. I've been reading a detective story lately. Have you ever read any detective stories? Hey Alice. Yes, I enjoy reading detective stories. Which one are you reading? I'm reading The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. It's so interesting. What about you? Which detective stories do you like? I like the Hercule Poirot series by Agatha Christie. They're full of twists and turns. What do you like about detective stories? I enjoy the mystery and trying to solve the case before the detective does. It's a fun challenge. How about you? 
I like the same things. I also enjoy the characters and the suspense in detective stories. It keeps me engaged and wanting to read more. True. Do you have a favorite detective character? Hercule Poirot is my favorite. He's intelligent, observant, and has a unique personality. What about you? I like Sherlock Holmes. His brilliant mind and unique way of solving cases fascinate me. What do you think makes a good detective story? A good detective story should have a well-crafted mystery, interesting characters, and unexpected twists. The reader should be eager to find out what happens next. What do you think? I agree with you. I also think a good detective story should challenge the reader's mind and make them think about the clues and evidence. That's true. A good detective story should make the reader feel like they're part of the investigation. Have you ever thought about writing your own detective story? I haven't, but that sounds interesting. Maybe I'll give it a try. What would your detective story be about if you were to write one? I would write about a detective who solves mysteries using modern technology and traditional investigation techniques. It would be a mix of old and new. How about you? I would write about a young detective who solves cases using her intuition and understanding of human nature. It would be a character-driven story. That sounds great. I would love to read your story. Maybe we can exchange stories once we're done writing them. That's a great idea. Let's do it. Good luck with your story, Bob. Thanks, Alice. Good luck with yours too. Let's catch up soon to discuss our progress. Definitely. Take care, Bob. Talk to you soon. You too, Alice. Bye for now. Day 16 Hi Bob, how's your day going? Hello Alice, it's been alright so far. How about yours? It's been okay, but I had a bit of a scare earlier. I got stuck in an elevator for a few minutes. Oh no, that sounds terrible. Are you okay now? Yes, I'm fine. It just reminded me that I have a fear of small, closed spaces. Do you have any fears like that, Bob? Well, I don't like being in tight spaces either, but I'm not too afraid of them. I can understand why being stuck in an elevator would be scary, though. It was really frightening. Thankfully, the elevator started working again quickly. But what should I do if that happens again and I'm stuck for a longer time? First, try to stay calm. Press the emergency button in the elevator to call for help. You can also use your phone to call for assistance if you have a signal. That's good advice. I did press the emergency button, but I didn't think to use my phone. It's always good to have a backup plan. Remember to take deep breaths and try to relax while you wait for help. I'll keep that in mind. Do you have any suggestions for overcoming my fear of closed spaces? One technique that might help is to gradually expose yourself to small, enclosed spaces for short periods of time. This can help you become more comfortable in those situations. That's a good idea. Maybe I'll try spending some time in small rooms or closets to help me feel less anxious. It's worth a try. You could also consider talking to a therapist or counselor about your fear. They might have some helpful strategies for overcoming it. Thanks, Bob. I'll look into that. I appreciate your help and understanding. No problem, Alice. It's important to support each other, and I'm glad I could offer some advice. If you ever need to talk about it, just let me know. Thank you, Bob. I'm lucky to have a friend like you. You're welcome, Alice. Remember, we all have fears, and it's okay to ask for help when we need it. Take care and stay strong. I will, Bob. Thanks again for your support. Have a great day. You too, Alice. 
Day 17. Shopping for shoes at a shoe store. Hi Isabella, I heard you're looking for a new pair of shoes. Do you need any help? Hi Eric, yes, I am. I would appreciate some assistance. I'm not quite sure what type of shoes I should buy. Sure, I'm happy to help. First, let's think about what you need the shoes for. Are they for a specific event, or just everyday wear? I need some comfortable shoes for daily use. Something that can match with different outfits. Great. Let's start by looking at some sneakers and casual shoes. They're usually comfortable and versatile. What's your favorite color? I like black, white, and blue. I think those colors can easily match my wardrobe. Good choices. Here are some sneakers in those colors. You can also consider slip-ons or loafers for a more casual look. What do you think about these options? I like these black sneakers and the blue loafers. Can I try them on? Of course. Let me check if they have your size. What size do you wear? I wear a size 7. Okay, here you go. Try these on and see how they feel. Remember to walk around a bit to make sure they're comfortable. Thanks, Eric. These black sneakers feel great, but the blue loafers are a bit tight. Do they have a bigger size? Let me check for you. Yes, they have a size 7.5. Here, try these on. Thank you. The 7.5 fits much better. I think I'll go with the blue loafers. Great choice. They look stylish and comfortable. Is there anything else you need help with? Actually, I'm also looking for some shoe care products. What do you recommend to keep these loafers clean and in good condition? For leather shoes like these, I'd recommend using a soft cloth, leather cleaner, and leather conditioner. It's important to clean and condition your shoes regularly to keep them looking nice. Thank you for the advice, Eric. I'll pick up those shoe care products before I leave. I appreciate your help today. You're welcome, Isabella. I'm glad I could help. If you have any other questions or need assistance in the future, don't hesitate to ask. Enjoy your new shoes. Thanks, Eric. Have a great day. You too, Isabella. Take care. Day 18 buying jewelry at a store. Hi Isabella, I heard you wanted to buy some jewelry. Can I help you with that? Hello Eric, yes, I'm looking for a jewelry store to buy a diamond ring and some gold earrings. Do you know a good place? Of course, Isabella. There's a great jewelry store called Elegant Gems nearby. They have a wide selection of diamonds, gold, and other precious stones. That sounds perfect. Do you know how to choose a good diamond? I'm not an expert, but I know the four CS are important, carat, cut, color, and clarity. The carat is the weight of the diamond, and the cut refers to how well the diamond is shaped. I see. What about color and clarity? Color refers to the absence of any color in a diamond. The less color, the more valuable the diamond. Clarity is about the number of imperfections in the diamond. The fewer imperfections, the more valuable the stone. Thank you, Eric. That's very helpful. What about gold? How do I know if it's good quality? Gold is measured in carats, with 24 carats being pure gold. The higher the carat number, the more gold there is in the piece of jewelry. I understand. Is it better to buy higher carat gold? It depends on your preference. Higher carat gold is more valuable, but it's also softer and more susceptible to scratches. Lower carat gold is more durable but has a lower gold content. I appreciate the information. How can I make sure I'm getting a good deal at the jewelry store? 
it's a good idea to compare prices at different stores and ask for any available discounts. You can also ask for a certificate of authenticity for diamonds and other precious stones. Great advice, Eric. Thank you so much for your help. I feel more confident going to the jewelry store now. You're welcome, Isabella. If you have any more questions or need help, feel free to ask. Good luck with your jewelry shopping. Thank you, Eric. I'll let you know what I find. Have a great day. You too, Isabella. Enjoy your shopping. Day 19 Taylor made wedding dresses and suits. Hi Isabella, have you ever heard about tailor-made wedding dresses and suits? Hello Eric, yes, I have. A tailor-made wedding dress or suit is custom-made by a professional tailor to fit the bride or groom perfectly. It's a great option for people who want a unique and well-fitting outfit for their special day. How about you, have you ever thought about getting a tailor-made suit? I have indeed. I think it's a fantastic idea because it ensures the best fit and allows me to choose the style and fabric I like. What do you think are the advantages of a tailor-made wedding dress? I believe one of the main advantages is that a tailor-made wedding dress is designed specifically for the bride's body shape and size, which guarantees a perfect fit. Moreover, the bride can choose her desired style, fabric, and details to create a one-of-a-kind gown. And of course, a well-fitting dress can make the bride feel more confident and comfortable on her wedding day. Those are great points, Isabella. Do you know what the process of getting a tailor-made wedding dress or suit is like? Yes, it usually starts with a consultation between the client and the tailor. They discuss the client's ideas, preferences, and budget. Then, the tailor takes the client's measurements and helps them choose the right fabric and design. After that, the tailor creates a pattern and makes a mock-up of the dress or suit. The client comes back for a fitting, and any necessary adjustments are made. This process may be repeated a few times until the final product is perfect. That sounds like a thorough process. Is there anything people should consider before deciding on a tailor-made wedding dress or suit? Definitely. First, they should research and find a reputable tailor with experience in making wedding attire. It's also essential to consider the budget, as custom-made clothing can be more expensive than ready-made options. Additionally, they should allow enough time for the entire process, which can take several months, depending on the tailor's workload and the complexity of the design. Great advice, Isabella. Do you have any tips on how to find a reliable tailor? Sure, Eric. One way to find a good tailor is to ask for recommendations from friends or family members who have had a positive experience. Online reviews can also be helpful, as well as visiting the tailor's shop to see samples of their work. Lastly, it's a good idea to have a consultation with the tailor to discuss your needs and get a sense of their expertise and professionalism. Thank you for sharing your knowledge, Isabella. I'll keep all of that in mind when looking for a tailor for my wedding suit. You're welcome, Eric. I'm sure you'll find the perfect tailor and have a fantastic suit for your special day. If you have any more questions or need help, don't hesitate to ask. Good luck! Thanks, Isabella. I appreciate your help. Have a great day. You too, Eric. Take care. Day 20 The Beauty of Serengeti Hi Isabella. Have you ever watched a nature documentary about the Serengeti in Africa? Hello Eric. Yes, I've seen a few documentaries. It's an amazing place with lots of beautiful landscapes and wildlife. I agree. I watched one recently, and I was fascinated by the vast open plains and the variety of animals that live there. Did you know that Serengeti is home to the largest land animal migration in the world? Yes, I've heard about the Great Migration. 
It's when millions of wildebeest, zebras, and other animals travel in search of food and water, right? That's correct. They travel around 1,800 miles each year, facing many challenges like crossing crocodile-infested rivers and avoiding predators like lions and hyenas. Wow, that's incredible. I also read that the Serengeti ecosystem supports the highest concentration of large predators in the world. Yes, it's true. The predators are essential for maintaining the balance in the ecosystem. For instance, lions help control the population of herbivores by hunting them for food. I remember seeing a documentary about the endangered African elephants in the Serengeti. They're such intelligent and social animals. Absolutely. Elephants are known for their strong family bonds and their ability to communicate with each other. They also play a vital role in shaping the landscape by uprooting trees and creating clearings, which promotes the growth of grasslands. It's sad to think about how human activities, like poaching and habitat loss, are threatening these amazing creatures. Yes, it's crucial to raise awareness and support conservation efforts to protect the Serengeti and its inhabitants. Many organizations are working hard to preserve this unique ecosystem. That's true. And ecotourism can also contribute to conservation by providing funds for wildlife protection and supporting local communities. Absolutely. Visiting the Serengeti on a responsible safari can be a life-changing experience, offering a chance to witness the beauty of nature while supporting its preservation. I'd love to visit the Serengeti one day and see its breathtaking landscapes and incredible wildlife with my own eyes. Me too, Isabella. It's definitely on my bucket list. Until then, we can continue learning about it and sharing our knowledge with others to help promote conservation. That's a great idea, Eric. Let's keep exploring the wonders of our planet and do our part to protect it. I couldn't agree more, Isabella. Let's keep our passion for nature alive and inspire others to join us in our journey. Day 21 A casual chat about Formula One racing. Hi Isabella. I heard that you're a big fan of Formula One racing. Can you tell me more about it? Hello Eric. Sure, I'd love to. Formula One is the highest class of single-seater auto racing. It's an international championship with races called Grand Prix held in various countries. That sounds interesting. How does a typical Formula One race weekend work? Well, a race weekend usually consists of practice sessions, a qualifying session, and the race itself. The practice sessions help teams and drivers prepare and test their cars, while the qualifying session determines the starting positions for the race. I see. And how do they determine the winner of a Formula One race? The winner is the driver who finishes the race in the shortest time. Points are awarded to the top 10 finishers, and these points contribute to the overall championship standings for both drivers and teams. Can you tell me more about the cars used in Formula One racing? Sure. Formula One cars are highly specialized machines, with advanced aerodynamics, lightweight materials, and powerful engines. Teams spend millions of dollars each year to develop and improve their cars. Wow, that's impressive. How about the drivers? What skills do they need to succeed in Formula One racing? Formula One drivers need to have excellent physical fitness, quick reflexes, and great concentration. They also need a deep understanding of the car's mechanics and strategy to make split-second decisions during the race. It sounds like a challenging sport. What are some of the most famous teams and drivers in Formula One history? There have been many legendary teams and drivers. Some of the most famous teams include Ferrari, McLaren, and Mercedes, while iconic drivers include Ayrton Senna, Michael Schumacher, and Lewis Hamilton. I've heard of some of them. Can you tell me about a memorable Formula One race or moment that you've seen? One memorable race was the 2008 Brazilian Grand Prix, 
where Lewis Hamilton won his first world championship. He overtook another driver on the last lap, in the last corner, securing enough points to win the championship. It was an incredible finish. That sounds amazing. I think I'll start watching Formula One races. Any tips for a beginner like me? Just enjoy the races and try to learn more about the teams, drivers, and circuits. There's a lot of strategy and technology involved, so the more you learn, the more exciting it becomes. I'd also recommend following Formula One news and joining fan discussions online. Thank you, Isabella. You've given me a great introduction to Formula One racing. I can't wait to watch my first race. You're welcome, Eric. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you have any questions or want to discuss the races, don't hesitate to reach out. Have fun! Day 22 A Journey to the Wild West Hi Isabella, have you ever heard about the Wild West and Cowboys? Hi Eric, yes, I've heard a little bit about them. Weren't they people who lived in the western part of the United States a long time ago? That's correct. The Wild West refers to the period and region in the 19th century when settlers moved to the western part of the United States. Cowboys were people who worked with cattle and horses during that time. Oh, I see. What was life like for cowboys in the Wild West? Life was tough and challenging. Cowboys had to work long hours, taking care of cattle and horses. They also had to face harsh weather conditions and sometimes even dangerous animals or outlaws. Wow, that sounds exciting, but also difficult. Did they have any special skills or abilities? Yes, they did. Cowboys were known for their excellent horse riding skills and their ability to use a lasso, which is a long rope with a loop at the end. They used the lasso to catch cattle and control them. That's interesting. Were there any famous cowboys or outlaws from the Wild West? There were many famous figures, both real and fictional, like Billy the Kid, Wyatt Earp, and Jesse James. They were known for their gunslinging abilities and adventures. I've heard some of those names in movies and books. Did cowboys have any specific clothing or style? Yes, they did. Cowboys typically wore wide-brimmed hats, bandanas, boots, and chaps to protect their legs while riding. They also had unique accessories, such as a gun belt and holster. It seems like a fascinating time in history. How did the Wild West come to an end? The Wild West era ended as more people moved to the western part of the United States, and law enforcement became more organized. Also, the expansion of railroads and technology made it easier for people to travel and communicate, which led to a more settled society. That makes sense. It's amazing how much the world has changed since then. Indeed, it is. The Wild West is a significant part of American history and has influenced popular culture in many ways, such as movies, books, and even fashion. Thank you for sharing all this information, Eric. I've learned a lot about the Wild West and cowboys today. You're welcome, Isabella. I'm glad you found it interesting. If you have any more questions, don't hesitate to ask. I definitely will, Eric. Have a great day. Day 23 A memorable trip to Tokyo Hi Isabella, I heard you just got back from your vacation in Tokyo. How was it? Hey Eric. Yes, I did. It was amazing. The city is so beautiful and full of life. That sounds great. What was your favorite part of the trip? It's hard to pick just one, but I think visiting the historic temples and experiencing the Japanese tea ceremony were my favorite parts. I've always wanted to see a traditional tea ceremony. Can you tell me more about it? Of course. 
The tea ceremony is a Japanese cultural activity that involves the preparation and presentation of matcha, a powdered green tea. It's a very calming and spiritual experience. That sounds fascinating. And what about the temples? Which ones did you visit? I visited a few, but the most memorable ones were Sensoji and Meiji Shrine. They were so peaceful and had such a rich history. I've heard about Sensoji. It's one of the oldest temples in Tokyo, right? Yes, that's correct. It's an ancient Buddhist temple, and it's very popular among tourists and locals alike. And how about the food? I know Japanese cuisine is famous for its sushi and ramen. Oh, the food was incredible. I tried sushi at the famous Tsukiji fish market and had some delicious ramen in Shinjuku. I also tried other dishes like tempura and okonomiyaki. That all sounds so delicious. What about shopping? Did you buy any souvenirs or gifts? I did. I bought some traditional Japanese items like kimono, folding fans, and tea sets. There are so many interesting shops and markets in Tokyo. I can imagine. Did you also get to experience the famous cherry blossoms? Unfortunately, I missed the cherry blossom season, but I still enjoyed the beautiful parks and gardens around the city. It still sounds like you had a fantastic trip. I would love to visit Tokyo someday. You definitely should, Eric. It's such an amazing city with so much to see and do. I can't wait to go back. Thanks for sharing your experience, Isabella. I'll definitely add Tokyo to my travel bucket list. You're welcome, Eric. If you need any tips or recommendations when you plan your trip, just let me know. I appreciate that, Isabella. I'll definitely reach out to you when the time comes. Thanks again. No problem, Eric. Have a great day. Day 24 Planning a Hawaii Vacation Hey Isabella, have you ever been to Hawaii? Hi Eric, no, I haven't. I've always wanted to go, though. How about you? I went there once with my family when I was younger, and I loved it. I was thinking of going there again for my upcoming vacation. Would you like to join me? That sounds amazing, Eric. I'd love to. What should we do to plan our trip? First, let's decide on the dates for our vacation. When are you available? First, let's decide on the dates for our vacation. When are you available? July works for me too. Now, let's choose which island or islands we want to visit. There are several options like Oahu, Maui, Kauai, and the Big Island. I've heard great things about Maui. What do you think? Maui is a fantastic choice. It has beautiful beaches and the famous road to Hana. We can also visit Haleakala National Park. That sounds perfect. What's the next step? We should book our flights and accommodation. I recommend looking for deals online. Websites like Expedia or Booking.com often have good offers. Great idea. How long should we stay in Hawaii? I think a week or 10 days would be enough to explore Maui and relax on the beaches. What do you think? That sounds good to me. Once we book our flights and accommodation, what else do we need to plan? We should make a list of activities and sites we want to see. For example, snorkeling, surfing lessons, visiting waterfalls, or attending a traditional Hawaiian luau. I'm so excited. I've always wanted to try surfing. We should also research some good restaurants and local food to try. Absolutely. Hawaii has amazing food. We must try poke, which is a delicious raw fish salad, and loco moco, a dish made with rice, a hamburger patty, and gravy. Yum. I can't wait to try all the local dishes. What else should we pack for our trip? 
Make sure to bring sunscreen, beachwear, sunglasses, and a hat. We'll also need comfortable shoes for exploring and hiking. Thanks, Eric. I'm looking forward to our Hawaii vacation. Let's keep in touch to plan everything. Sounds good, Isabella. I'll start researching more about Maui and the activities we can do. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Eric. Have a great day. Day 25 Hello, Tom. Do you like horses? Yes, I like horses. They are beautiful animals. Have you ever ridden a horse? Yes, I have. I took some horse riding lessons a few years ago. It was fun. How about you? I have never ridden a horse, but I would like to try it someday. Are horse riding lessons expensive? It depends on the place, but usually, they are not too expensive. You can find a good horse riding school and learn for a reasonable price. That's great to hear. I will look for a horse riding school near me. Do you still ride horses? Not as often as I would like, but I try to ride a horse once in a while. It's a great way to relax and enjoy nature. I agree. Horses are amazing creatures. How long does it take to learn horse riding? It's different for everyone, but with regular lessons and practice, you can learn the basics in a few months. That's not too long. I am excited to start learning. Have you ever watched a horse race? Yes, I have been to a horse race once. It was very exciting. The horses were running so fast. Have you ever been to a horse race? No, I haven't. But I have seen horse races on TV. It looks very interesting. It is. You should go to a horse race someday. It's a great experience. I will definitely do that. Thank you for telling me about horse riding and horse racing, Mary. You're welcome, Tom. I hope you enjoy learning horse riding and watching horse races. Day 26 Hello, my dear husband. Today is our 10th wedding anniversary. Can you believe it? Wow, time flies. It feels like just yesterday when we got married. I am so happy to celebrate this special day with you. Me too. We are in New York now. I heard about a famous restaurant here. Let's have dinner there tonight. Great idea. I love trying new places. What is the name of the restaurant? It is called The Elegant Table. People say it has very delicious food. That sounds perfect. I am excited to try their dishes. Shall we make a reservation? Yes, let's do that. I will call them now to book a table for us. Later, at the restaurant. This place is beautiful. I am glad we chose it for our anniversary dinner. I agree. The atmosphere is so romantic. I am sure we will have a wonderful time tonight. What would you like to eat? I think I will try the grilled salmon. It sounds very tasty. How about you? I will have the steak with mashed potatoes. I love a good steak. Good choices. Let's also order a bottle of wine to celebrate our special day. I agree. Let's choose a nice red wine to go with our meal. During the meal. The food is amazing. I am so happy we came here. Yes, it is really delicious. We should come here again in the future. Definitely. Do you remember our first date? We were so young and nervous. I do remember. It was a beautiful summer evening and we went to that little Italian restaurant. Yes, that's right. We talked for hours and laughed a lot. It was the beginning of our wonderful journey together. I am grateful for all the years we have spent together. We have had our ups and downs, 
but our love has always been strong. I feel the same way. I am looking forward to spending many more happy years with you. Happy anniversary, my love. Happy anniversary to you too. Cheers to us and our beautiful life together. The couple continued to enjoy their meal, reminiscing about their past and looking forward to the future. They left the restaurant with full hearts and happy memories of their 10th wedding anniversary celebration. Day 27 Hello, Sarah. How are you today? Hi, John. I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. I heard you visited London recently. How was it? Yes, I did. It was great. The city is very beautiful. Have you been there? No, I haven't. I would love to go someday. What did you like the most about London? I loved the museums and parks. The British Museum was amazing. You should visit it if you go to London. That sounds interesting. I like history a lot. What else did you see? I also went to the Tower of London. It's a famous castle with a long history. Oh, I've heard of it. Did you see the crown jewels? Yes, I did. They are very beautiful and valuable. It was fascinating to see them. I can imagine. What about the parks? Which one did you like the most? I loved Hyde Park. It's a big park in the center of London. People can walk, ride bikes, or just relax there. That sounds nice. I love spending time in parks. Did you try any traditional British food? Yes, I tried fish and chips. It's a popular dish in London. It was very tasty. I like fish and chips too. How was the weather during your trip? It was a bit rainy, but not too cold. London is known for its rain, so I expected it. True. Did you use public transportation while you were there? Yes, I used the underground, also called the tube. It's very convenient for getting around the city. I've heard it's one of the oldest subway systems in the world. Yes, that's right. It's very interesting. I also took a ride on a double-decker bus. It was a fun experience. I would love to try that too. How long did you stay in London? I stayed for a week. There's so much to see and do. I hope to go back again someday. I hope I can visit London soon. Your trip sounds amazing. Thanks for sharing your experience with me. You're welcome, John. I'm sure you'll love London when you visit. Let's meet again soon to talk more. Yes, let's do that. Take care, Sarah. See you soon. You too, John. Goodbye. Day 28 Hi, do you know anything about social life in medieval Europe? Hi. Yes, I know a little. Would you like to learn about it? Yes, please. What was it like during that time? In medieval Europe, people lived in small villages and towns. Life was simple. What did people do for work? Most people were farmers. They grew food for their families and the village. Did they have schools? Not like today. Only a few people went to school. Most people learned from their parents or at the church. What about the kings and queens? They lived in castles and had many servants. They ruled the land and made the laws. How did people have fun? They had festivals and fairs. They played games, danced, and watched plays. Did people travel a lot? No, not much. Travel was difficult and dangerous. Most people stayed near their homes. 
What kind of clothes did they wear? They wore simple clothes made from wool and linen. Only the rich people wore fancy clothes. Did they have any special holidays? Yes, they celebrated religious holidays like Christmas and Easter. They also had harvest festivals. What did people eat? They ate bread, vegetables, and sometimes meat. They drank water, milk, and ale. How did they get married? Marriages were often arranged by the families. The bride and groom would have a simple ceremony at the church. What about knights? Did they really fight in battles? Yes, knights were trained to fight and protect the kingdom. They wore armor and rode horses. That's so interesting. Thank you for telling me about medieval Europe. You're welcome. It's a fascinating time in history. If you want to learn more, you can read books or watch documentaries. Day 29 Hi. How are you today? Hi. I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thank you. What do you like to do in your free time? I like to watch TV and use the internet. How about you? I like to listen to the radio and read books. What is your favorite TV show? My favorite TV show is The Amazing Race. It's very exciting. Do you have a favorite radio station? Yes, I like to listen to classic FM. They play classical music. Have you ever listened to classical music? Yes, I have. It's nice, but I prefer pop music. What do you like to read on the internet? I like to read the news and watch funny videos. What kind of videos do you like to watch? I like to watch cooking videos. I love to learn new recipes. Do you like to cook? Yes, I do. I enjoy making different dishes. What is your favorite food? My favorite food is pizza. What is your favorite book? My favorite book is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Have you read any of the Harry Potter books? No, I haven't. But I watched the movies. They were great. What kind of books do you like to read? I like to read mystery and adventure books. What is your favorite website? My favorite website is YouTube. There are so many interesting videos there. Do you use social media? Yes, I use Facebook and Instagram. I like to stay connected with my friends. What about you? I use Twitter and Snapchat. It's fun to share pictures and updates. Have you ever listened to a podcast? Yes, I have. I like listening to podcasts about history and science. Do you have a favorite podcast? I don't have a favorite one, but I enjoy listening to podcasts about sports. Do you play any sports? Yes, I play soccer and basketball. How about you? I play tennis and swim. Do you watch sports on TV? Sometimes I watch soccer games. Do you have a favorite team? My favorite team is Barcelona. They play really well. What do you like to do on weekends? On weekends, I like to go for a walk in the park and watch movies. What about you? I like to visit my family and play video games. Do you have a favorite movie? My favorite movie is The Lion King. It's a great animation. Have you seen it? Yes, I have. I love that movie too. It's so much fun. What do you like to do when it's raining outside? When it's raining, I like to stay at home and drink hot chocolate. What do you like to do? I like to watch movies or play board games with my family. Do you have a favorite board game? My favorite board game is Monopoly. It's very entertaining. What is your favorite season? My favorite season is summer. I love going to the beach. How about you? 
I like spring. The weather is nice, and flowers start to bloom. It's beautiful. Do you have any pets? No, I don't have any pets. But I would love to have a dog. Do you have any pets? Yes, I have a cat named Whiskers. She's very cute. What would you name your dog if you had one? I would name my dog Buddy. Day 30 Hi, how are you today? Hi, I'm good, thanks. How about you? I'm fine too. I was thinking about my small house and big family. Oh, that's nice. How many people are in your family? There are eight people in my family. What about your family? I have a small family. There are only four of us. That's nice too. It must be quiet at your home. Yes, it is. What is it like to have a big family? It is fun but sometimes noisy. We have many brothers and sisters. Do you all live in the small house together? Yes, we do. We share rooms and help each other with chores. That sounds nice. Do you have family dinners together? Yes, we do. We eat and talk about our day. I would like to have a big family dinner one day. You should come to our house for dinner. We can have a big dinner with your family too. That sounds great. When can we do that? How about next Saturday? We can have a big dinner together. Perfect. We will bring some food too. Great. We can make a big meal with different dishes. I will tell my family about it. They will be excited. I'm sure my family will be happy to meet your family. I can't wait for next Saturday. It will be so much fun. Yes, it will be. Let's meet at my house at 6 p.m. Okay, see you then. Goodbye. Goodbye, see you next Saturday. Day 1 Hello, my friend. How are you today? Hi, Jack. I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. What did you do yesterday? Yesterday, I went to the park with my family. We had a picnic. And you? I watched a movie at home. It was fun. What was the movie about? It was about a man who travels in time to save the world. That sounds interesting. Did you like it? Yes, I liked it very much. It was exciting. I want to watch it too. Can you tell me the name of the movie? Of course. The name of the movie is Time Hero. Thank you, Jack. I will watch it soon. You're welcome, Emily. What are your plans for the weekend? This weekend, I will go shopping with my friends. We want to buy new clothes. What about you? I will visit my grandparents in the countryside. I haven't seen them for a long time. That's nice. I'm sure they will be happy to see you. Yes, I think so too. I miss them very much. I hope you have a great time with your grandparents. Thank you, Emily. I hope you have fun shopping with your friends. Thanks, Jack. I'm sure we will. By the way, have you tried the new restaurant near our school? No, I haven't. 
Is it good? Yes, it's very good. They serve delicious food. We should go there together someday. That's a great idea, Jack. Let's plan it for next week. Sure, I'll check my schedule and let you know. Perfect. I can't wait to try the new restaurant. Me too, Emily. I think you'll like it. I'm sure I will. Thank you for the suggestion. You're welcome. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. You too, Jack. See you later. Goodbye, Emily. Have a nice day. Goodbye, Jack. You too. Day 2. Hi, Sarah. Does this bus go to the downtown shopping center? Yes, it will take us there. Are you sure? I always take this bus. How long does it take to get there by bus? It only takes about 20 minutes. Where do we get off the bus? We can get off right by the food court. We can get off right by the food court. Is there a bus stop close to the shopping center? Yes, it's right in the middle of the shopping center's parking lot. That's convenient. I know, right? Hey, did you hear about the new restaurant that opened up in town? No, I haven't. What's it called? It's called the tasting room. I heard it's amazing. Really? What kind of food do they serve? It's a mix of Italian and French cuisine. I heard their seafood risotto is to die for. Hmm, sounds interesting. Have you been there yet? Yeah, I went there last night with my partner. It was fantastic. How was the service? The service was excellent. Our waiter was very attentive and knowledgeable about the menu. That's great to hear. I'll definitely have to try it out. What about the atmosphere? The atmosphere was really cozy and intimate. It's the perfect place for a romantic dinner. Sounds perfect. I can't wait to try it out. Thanks for the recommendation. Hello, I'm looking for a book about London. Do you sell travel books? Yes, we offer a wide selection including travel books and books about London specifically. Are you looking for something in particular? Yes, I'm planning a few days trip and I want to get information about where to go and which restaurants to try. I see. I would recommend Lonely Planet London for you. It's a comprehensive guide that covers the most popular tourist attractions, restaurants, shopping areas, and more. Okay, is there anything more detailed? I want to learn more about the city's history. Of course, then I would suggest London, the biography. The author, Peter Ackroyd, delves into the history of London comprehensively. It covers both the tourist attractions and the social and cultural past of the city. Great, I'll take both. Thank you. You're welcome, happy reading. And have a great time on your London trip. Did you hear about the new cafe that opened up downtown? No, I haven't. What's it like? It's a hip, trendy place with great coffee and pastries. The atmosphere is super cool too. That sounds like my kind of place. Have you tried their coffee yet? Yeah, I stopped by there this morning. The latte was delicious.
And their avocado toast is top notch. Avocado toast? I love that stuff. What else do they have on the menu? They have a variety of breakfast items, as well as sandwiches and salads for lunch. And their sweets are all made in house. That sounds amazing. I'll definitely have to check it out. Thanks for the heads up. Hello, do you have any books about Paris? I'm planning a trip there and would love to learn more about the city. Yes, we have a selection of travel books, including books about Paris. Is there a specific area of the city or topic you're interested in? I'm interested in learning about the history and culture of Paris. Can you recommend a book? Absolutely. The Most Beautiful Walk in the World, A Pedestrian in Paris, by John Baxter is a great choice. It's a memoir about the author's life in Paris, and he covers a lot of the city's history and culture as well as his own experiences living there. That sounds perfect. What about a guidebook for the city? For a comprehensive guide, I would recommend Rick Steves Paris. It covers all the main tourist attractions as well as some lesser known spots and includes practical information like maps, transportation options, and restaurant recommendations. Great, I'll take both. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. Enjoy your trip to Paris and happy reading. Did you try that new Thai restaurant that opened up on Main ST? No, I haven't. Is it any good? It's amazing. The pad thai was the best I've ever had. And the green curry was incredibly flavorful. That sounds delicious. Did they have a good selection of vegetarian options? Yeah, they had a whole section of the menu dedicated to vegetarian and vegan options. The veggie stir fry was fantastic. That's great to hear. I love Thai food, and I've been looking for a new place to try. Thanks for the recommendation. Hi, do you have any books about New York? I'm going there for the first time and want to learn more about the city. Yes, we have a selection of travel books, including books about New York. Are you looking for a specific area or topic? I'm interested in learning about the main attractions, as well as some hidden gems, that tourists might not know about. For a comprehensive guide, I would recommend Lonely Planet New York City. It covers all the main tourist attractions and also includes some off-the-beaten-path places to explore. That sounds great. Do you have anything about the city's history? Yes, Gotham. A History of New York City to 1898 by Edwin G. Burroughs and Mike Wallace is a great book for that. It's a comprehensive history of New York City up until the turn of the 20th century. Perfect, I'll take both. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. Have a great trip to New York and happy reading. Have you been to that new steakhouse that opened up on Park Avenue? No, I haven't. What's it like? It's a high-end place with a sleek, modern design. The steaks are cooked to perfection and the sides are all top-notch. That sounds amazing. How was the service? The service was excellent. Our server was very knowledgeable about the menu and made great recommendations. And the wine list is fantastic too. That sounds like the perfect place for a special occasion. Thanks for the recommendation. Excuse me, can I buy a train ticket to London from Paris, please? Of course. Do you want a one-way or round-trip ticket? One-way, please. How much is it? It depends on the date and time you want to travel. Let me check for you. Okay, it looks like the ticket is 100 euros. Is that okay? Yes, that's fine. 
What time does the train leave? The next train to London leaves in two hours at 2 p.m. Does that work for you? Yes, that's perfect. Can I pay with cash or do I need to use a credit card? We accept both cash and credit card. Which one would you prefer to use? I have cash, so I'll pay with that. Great. Here's your ticket. Don't forget to keep it with you and show it to the conductor when you board the train. Thank you very much. This was very helpful. You're welcome. Have a safe and enjoyable trip to London. Hi, my name is Jane. Nice to meet you. Hi Jane, I'm David. Nice to meet you too. So, where are you headed? I'm also going to London. I'm visiting some family there. That's cool. Have you been to London before? Yes, I have. It's one of my favorite cities in the world. I've never been there before. What are some of the things you like to do there? Well, there are a lot of great museums and historical landmarks, like the British Museum and the Tower of London. And the food is really good too. Have you tried fish and chips before? No, I haven't. Is it good? It's delicious. You have to try it when you get to London. And the nightlife is also really vibrant. There are a lot of great restaurants and clubs to check out. Sounds like there's a lot to do and see there. I'm really excited to explore the city. Definitely. And the train ride itself is really beautiful too. Did you see the countryside as we were passing through? Yes, it was amazing. The rolling hills and green fields were so picturesque. It's one of the things I love about train travel. You get to see so much of the country that you wouldn't see otherwise. I couldn't agree more. This has been a really great trip so far. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Welcome to London. British Museum Visit So, what brings you to the British Museum? I've always wanted to visit the museum and see all the amazing artifacts and exhibits. And you? Same here. I've heard a lot about the museum and wanted to see it for myself. It's definitely one of the top attractions in London. Have you seen the Rosetta Stone exhibit yet? Not yet. I was thinking of checking it out later. Have you seen it? Yes, it's really fascinating. It's amazing to think about the history behind it and how it helped us understand ancient languages. That sounds really cool. I'll have to make sure I check it out. What other exhibits have you seen? I've seen the Egyptian mummies exhibit and the ancient Greek statues exhibit. They're both really interesting. I saw the Greek statues exhibit earlier. They were really beautiful. I also like the exhibit about the history of money. I haven't seen that one yet. I'll have to check it out. Definitely. There's so much to see here, it's hard to see everything in one visit. I agree. But that's what makes it so amazing. The British Museum is a treasure trove of knowledge and history. I couldn't have said it better myself. I'm really glad we met here and got to share this experience together. Me too. It's been really nice talking to you. Have a great rest of your visit. You too, take care. This has been such an amazing day at the British Museum. I can't believe we saw so much history and culture in one place. I know, right? It's incredible how much there is to see here. So, where are you headed now? I'm going to my hotel near Trafalgar Square. How about you? I'm staying in the same area. Do you want to walk there together? 
Sure, that would be great. This is my first time in London, so I'm excited to see more of the city. London is a beautiful city with so much history and culture. Have you seen any of the historical sites yet? No, not yet. Do you have any recommendations? Well, there's Buckingham Palace, where the Queen lives. And Big Ben and the Houses of Parliament are also really iconic. And of course, there's the Tower of London and the Tower Bridge. Wow, those all sound really amazing. Which one is your favorite? I really love the Tower of London. It has a lot of history and it's such a unique building. But they're all worth seeing. I can't wait to see them all. It's incredible how much history and culture there is in London. Yes, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. London has so much to offer, from its museums to its parks to its food. It sounds like an incredible place. I'm really glad I came to visit. I'm glad you did too. London is a city that you'll never forget. Visit the Tower of London ticket line. Hi, I'm Isabella. Are you also here to visit the Tower of London? Yes, I am. My name is Kevin. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Kevin. Have you been here before? No, this is my first time here. How about you? This is my second time visiting the tower. It's an amazing place with so much history. That's what I've heard. I'm really excited to see it for myself. You won't be disappointed. The tower has a lot of interesting exhibits and artifacts. Have you heard about the crown jewels? Yes, I have. I can't wait to see them. I heard they're really beautiful. They definitely are. But the line to see them can get pretty long, so make sure to plan your visit accordingly. Thanks for the advice. Do you have any other recommendations for things to see while we're here? Well, I really enjoyed the White Tower exhibit. It has a lot of interesting weapons and armor from different time periods. And the medieval palace is also really cool. That sounds great. I'll definitely have to check those out. Thanks for the suggestions. No problem. Oh, it looks like the line is moving. We should be able to get our tickets soon. Great. I'm really looking forward to this visit. Thanks for talking with me. Of course. It's always nice to meet fellow travelers. Enjoy your visit to the tower. Healthy weight loss. Hey, have you ever thought about trying to lose some weight? Yeah, I have, but I never know where to start. It all seems so complicated. I used to feel the same way, but I've been doing some research and there are actually some really simple things you can do to get started. Really? Like what? Well, for starters, you can make small changes to your diet. Try to eat more fruits and vegetables, and less processed foods. That makes sense. I do eat a lot of junk food. And you can also start drinking more water. It'll help you feel full and keep you hydrated. Okay, that sounds doable. And as for exercise, you don't have to start with anything too intense. Even just taking a short walk every day can make a big difference. I like walking. Maybe I'll try that. Yeah, and you can always gradually increase the distance or try some other activities, like swimming or cycling. I never thought of that. Thanks for the advice, I'm definitely going to try it out. You're welcome. Just remember, it's all about making small, sustainable changes. Don't try to do too much too fast, and be patient with yourself. You'll get there. The Benefits of Regular Exercise for Healthy Weight Loss Hey, 
Have you been keeping up with the walking like we talked about? Yeah, I have been, but I'm not seeing a lot of results yet. Well, weight loss isn't always immediate. But one thing that can help is doing some more focused exercise, like strength training or cardio. I don't really like going to the gym or anything like that. That's okay, you don't have to. There are plenty of other options. You could try a dance class, or join a sports team, or even just do some bodyweight exercises at home. I don't know, that all sounds kind of intimidating. It can be at first, but the benefits are so worth it. Regular exercise not only helps you lose weight, but it also boosts your mood, strengthens your bones and muscles, and can even improve your sleep. Really? I had no idea it had so many benefits. Yeah, it's amazing what a little exercise can do. And you don't have to do it alone, either. You can find a workout buddy or join a class to make it more fun and motivating. Hmm, maybe I could try a dance class. I've always wanted to learn how to salsa. There you go. The point is to find something you enjoy, so that it doesn't feel like a chore. You'll be surprised at how quickly you start to see and feel the positive effects of regular exercise. You're right. I'm going to look into some dance classes today. Thanks for the encouragement. Of course, that's what friends are for. Let's support each other and keep each other motivated to reach our health goals. The harms of irregular and unhealthy nutrition. Hey, how's your healthy eating going? It's been tough. I keep craving junk food and sweets. I know it can be hard, but it's important to remember that those things are really bad for your health. I know, but they're just so delicious. I get it, but think about how you feel after you eat them. Do you feel energized and healthy, or sluggish and tired? Yeah, I guess you're right. I always feel kind of gross after I eat a lot of junk food. And it's not just about how you feel in the moment. Eating too much junk food and processed food can have long-term effects on your health, like heart disease, diabetes, and obesity. That's true. I really need to start being more careful about what I eat. It's okay to indulge every now and then, but the key is moderation. Try to focus on eating more fruits and vegetables, lean proteins, and whole grains. And make sure you're drinking plenty of water and getting enough sleep. That all sounds good, but I'm not sure I can give up my favorite snacks completely. You don't have to. You can still enjoy treats in moderation, like having a small piece of chocolate or a single cookie. Just don't make them a regular part of your diet. Okay, that sounds doable. Thanks for the advice, I really need to start taking better care of myself. Of course. We can support each other and stay on track together. Remember, it's all about making small, sustainable changes over time. You've got this. The Effects of Camp on Healthy Life I had so much fun camping this weekend. It was so great to get out into nature and away from the city. I've never been camping before. I'm not really sure I'd like it. You might be surprised. Camping has a lot of benefits for your health and well-being. Really? Like what? For starters, being out in nature can help reduce stress and improve your mood. It's also a great way to get some exercise, whether you're hiking or just setting up camp. I guess that makes sense. But what about all the bugs and dirt and stuff? Yeah, it can be a little uncomfortable at times. But it's also a good opportunity to challenge yourself and get out of your comfort zone. And it's all worth it for the experience and the sense of accomplishment. Hmm, I never thought of it that way. Maybe I'll give it a try sometime. 
You should. It's a great way to unplug from technology and connect with nature. And who knows, you might even discover a new hobby. That does sound nice. Thanks for the encouragement. Anytime. Let me know if you want to plan a trip together sometime. I'd love to share the experience with you. The Great Beauty of the Pyramids in Egypt I just got back from a trip to Egypt, and the pyramids were absolutely amazing. I bet they were. I've always wanted to see them in person. You really should. They're so much more impressive than any picture or video could capture. What was the most amazing thing about them? It's hard to say. Just the sheer size and scale of the pyramids is incredible. And the fact that they were built so long ago, without modern technology, is mind-boggling. That's true. I can't imagine how they were able to build something like that without cranes or bulldozers. And the way they've stood the test of time is also really impressive. They've been around for thousands of years, and they're still standing tall. That's amazing. What was it like to be there in person? It was honestly a little overwhelming. The pyramids are just so big and imposing, and there's a kind of energy around them that's hard to describe. I can only imagine. I definitely need to put a trip to Egypt on my bucket list. You won't regret it. The pyramids are truly one of the wonders of the world, and an experience you'll never forget. Taxi driver and customer. Good morning, where would you like to go? Hi, could you take me to Buckingham Palace, please? Sure thing. It's a bit of a busy area today, so it might take us a little while to get there. No problem, take your time. We're almost there now. Buckingham Palace is on the right. Great, thanks for getting me here. No problem. Is there anything else you'd like to see while you're in London? Actually, I was hoping to see the London Eye. Could you take me there next? Sure, no problem. The London Eye is a popular attraction, but we should be able to get there pretty quickly. Here we are. The London Eye is just ahead on the left. Thanks so much for taking me here. I appreciate it. It was my pleasure. Enjoy your time in London. I will, thanks. Where to, mate? Could you take me to the British Museum, please? You got it. It's a great place to visit. Have you been before? No, this is my first time in London. Well, you're in for a treat. The museum has some incredible exhibits, and it's a great way to learn about the history of the city. That's what I've heard. I'm really excited to see it. Yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite spots in the city. Are you planning on doing any other sightseeing while you're here? Yes, I'd like to see some of the other famous landmarks, like Buckingham Palace and the Tower of London. Those are definitely worth checking out. If you have the time, I'd also recommend taking a ride on the London Eye. It's a great way to get a bird's eye view of the city. That sounds amazing. I'll have to add it to my list. And don't forget to try some of the local cuisine while you're here. London has some great restaurants, and the fish and chips are a must try. I'll definitely do that. Thanks for the recommendation. No problem, mate. We're here. The British Museum is on your left. Thanks for the ride and the tips. Have a good one. You too, enjoy the museum. A conversation at Paris Airport while waiting for a flight to New York. Hi, do you know how long the delay is? 
They said, it's about an hour. Ugh, that's annoying. I was hoping to get to New York by lunchtime. I hear you. But at least we have some time to kill. Are you from Paris? No, I'm actually from London. Just visiting Paris for a few days. And you? I'm from New York. I was visiting some family here, and now I'm headed back home. Oh, cool. What did you think of Paris? I loved it. The food, the culture, the architecture, it's such a beautiful city. Have you been before? Yeah, I've been a few times. It's definitely one of my favorite cities in the world. I can see why. So what are you going to do in New York? Just some sightseeing and catching up with some friends. And you? Mostly just getting back into the swing of things. I work in finance, so I've got some meetings and stuff to attend. Ah, uh, got it. I'm a freelance writer, so I can work from anywhere. That's awesome. What kind of stuff do you write? Mostly travel writing. I've been to over 50 countries, so I've got a lot of material to work with. Wow, that's impressive. I love to travel too, but I haven't been to nearly as many places as you. It's never too late to start. Where's next on your list? I'm actually planning a trip to Asia next year. I've always been fascinated by the culture and the food. Asia is amazing. I'd highly recommend Japan or Thailand if you haven't been there yet. Thanks for the tip. I'll definitely look into those places. No problem. Hey, I think they're starting to board the flight. It was nice chatting with you. Yeah, same here. Have a good flight. You too. See you in New York. Conversation about the book Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. I just finished reading Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and I have to say, I was really impressed. Me too. It's such a classic for a reason. Definitely. I loved how imaginative it was, and how it played with language and logic. Yes, and the characters were so memorable. I think the Cheshire Cat is one of my all-time favorites. Oh, same here. And the Mad Hatter and the Queen of Hearts, they're just so vivid and bizarre. And yet, they all fit into this weird, dreamlike world that Lewis Carroll created. It's just so well-crafted. Agreed. And what's amazing is how it's endured over the years. People of all ages still love this book. Yes, it's definitely one of those timeless stories that will never go out of style. I can't wait to read Through the Looking Glass next. Oh, you're in for a treat. I think it's just as good as the first one. Good to hear. Well, thanks for chatting with me about it. No problem. It's always great to meet another fan of the book. A conversation about the book Around the World in 80 Days. I just finished reading Around the World in 80 Days, and I have to say, it was a real adventure. I know, right? It's amazing how Jules Verne was able to capture the excitement and danger of traveling the world in such a short book. Yes, and I loved how it combined elements of science fiction with a classic adventure story. Exactly. It's not just a travelogue, but it's also a commentary on the world and the technological innovations of the time. And the characters were so fascinating. I loved Philia's fog and his calm, methodical approach to everything. Me too but I also enjoyed the contrast between him and his impulsive French servant, Passepertout. And the settings were just incredible. 
From the streets of London to the wilderness of India, Verne really brought the world to life. Yes, and it's amazing to think that this book was written so long ago, but it's still so readable and engaging today. Definitely. It's a true classic that stands the test of time. I'm so glad I read it, and I would recommend it to anyone who loves adventure, travel, or science fiction. Same here. Thanks for chatting with me about it. My pleasure. It's always great to meet another fan of Jules Verne. Hi, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm doing well too. So, what did you do yesterday? Yesterday, I went to the park with my friends. We played basketball and had a picnic. That sounds like fun. What did you eat at the picnic? We had sandwiches, fruit, and juice. It was delicious. That sounds delicious. What are your plans for today? Today, I'm going to the library to study for my English exam. Good luck with your exam. What's your favorite subject in school? My favorite subject is science. I like learning about how the world works. That's great. Science is a fascinating subject. Well, it was nice talking to you. Have a good day at the library. Thank you. You too. My family. Hi, how's your family? My family is good, thank you. How about yours? My family is doing well too. Do you live with your family? Yes, I live with my parents and my younger brother. That's nice. I live with my parents and my older sister. Do you like spending time with your family? Yes, I love spending time with my family. We do a lot of fun things together, like playing games and going on vacations. That's great. My family and I also enjoy doing fun activities together. What's your favorite thing to do with your family? My favorite thing to do with my family is to go on picnics. We pack food and drinks and go to a park to enjoy the sunshine and each other's company. That sounds lovely. Picnics are a great way to spend time with family. What's your favorite food to bring on a picnic? My favorite food to bring on a picnic is sandwiches. They are easy to make and everyone likes them. Sandwiches are a classic picnic food. Well, it was nice talking to you about families. Have a great day. You too. Take care. Elementary Education Hi, have you talked to our daughter's teacher lately? Yes, I spoke with her teacher last week. How about you? I also spoke with her teacher last week. What did the teacher say about our daughter's progress? The teacher said that our daughter is doing well in class and making good progress in all her subjects. That's great to hear. I'm glad she's working hard. What did the teacher say about her behavior in class? The teacher said that our daughter is well behaved and respectful to her classmates and teachers. That's wonderful. I'm proud of her. What did the teacher suggest we do to help her continue to do well in school? The teacher suggested that we encourage her to read more books and practice her math skills at home. That's good advice. I'll make sure she spends some time each day reading and practicing math. What did the teacher say about her social skills in school? The teacher said that our daughter is making friends and getting along well with her classmates. That's great. I think it's important for children to have good social skills in school. Well, it was nice talking to you about our daughter's education. Have a good day. You too. Take care. 
our daughter's English education. Hi, how's our daughter doing in her English class? She's doing well, thank you. Her teacher says she's making good progress. That's great to hear. I'm glad she's working hard in her English class. What specifically is she learning in class? She's learning about grammar, vocabulary, and sentence structure. She's also practicing speaking and listening skills. That's great. Do you think she needs any extra help with her English studies? I don't think so. Her teacher says she's doing well in class and keeping up with her work. That's great. I think it's important for her to continue to practice her English skills outside of the classroom. Do you have any ideas on how we can help her do that? Yes, we can encourage her to read English books and watch English movies. We can also practice speaking English. I'll make sure she spends some time each day practicing her English skills. Well, it was nice talking to you about our daughter's English education. Have a good day. You too. Take care. Gary Kasparov and Deep Blue Hi, did you hear about the chess matches between Gary Kasparov and Deep Blue in 1996 and 1997? Yes, I did. I heard that Gary Kasparov was the world chess champion at the time and Deep Blue was a supercomputer created by IBM. That's right. The first match took place in 1996 and Kasparov won. But the second match in 1997 was won by Deep Blue. Wow, that's interesting. I heard that the matches were very close and both Kasparov and Deep Blue were very skilled. Yes, they were. The matches were historic because they were the first time a human world chess champion had played against a computer in a competitive match. That's true. I think it was a great opportunity for both Kasparov and Deep Blue to showcase their skills and for people to see how far technology had come in the field of chess. Absolutely. The matches were also important because they raised questions about the future of human and artificial intelligence in the world of chess and beyond. That's a good point. It was a fascinating time in history and I think the matches between Kasparov and Deep Blue will always be remembered as a milestone in the development of artificial intelligence. I couldn't agree more. It was nice talking to you about this. Have a great day. You too. Take care. Example sentences about chess. Do you know how to play chess? I am a very good chess player. How about playing chess tonight? I will teach you to play chess. We enjoyed playing chess last night. We often played chess after school. Talk about the movie Titanic. Hi, I just saw Titanic for the first time and I was blown away. Really? I've seen it several times and it's one of my favorite films. What did you think of it? Well, the special effects were incredible and the story was very touching. I loved how they showed the love story between Jack and Rose. Yes, the love story was definitely one of the highlights of the film. And the soundtrack was amazing too. Definitely. I was so invested in the characters and their story that I felt like I was right there with them. That's one of the reasons why Titanic is such a great film. It's not just a love story, but it's also a tragedy and it makes you feel a range of emotions. Exactly. And I also appreciated how the film showed the different class divisions on the ship. Yes, that was a great aspect of the film. The way the characters from different classes interacted and how their experiences on the ship were so different was really interesting. Overall, I would definitely recommend Titanic to others. It's a classic film that everyone should see. I completely agree. 
It's a timeless story that will always be relevant and will continue to touch people's hearts for years to come. Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet in the film Titanic Hi, I just saw Titanic and I was really impressed by the acting of Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet. Yeah, they were both fantastic in the film. What specifically stood out to you about their performances? Well, Leonardo DiCaprio did a great job of bringing Jack to life. He was charming, funny, and had great chemistry with Kate Winslet's character, Rose. I completely agree. And Kate Winslet was amazing as Rose. She was able to convey so much emotion and depth in her performance. Definitely. And the way they interacted on screen was just so natural. It was like they were meant to play those characters. That's exactly why their performances were so memorable. They were able to bring the characters to life in such a believable way. And the fact that they were both relatively unknown actors at the time just adds to how impressive their performances were. Absolutely. It's amazing to think about how they both went on to have such successful careers after Titanic. Yeah, and it's no surprise. Their performances in Titanic were truly outstanding and helped launch their careers. I couldn't agree more. Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet are both incredibly talented actors and their performances in Titanic are proof of that. Talking about the TV series The Mentalist. Hi, have you watched The Mentalist? I just started watching it and I'm already hooked. Oh yes, I've seen the entire series. It's a great show. What do you like about it so far? Well, Patrick has paranormal abilities and helps solve cases for the California Bureau of Investigation. And even though he's not taken seriously by some of the other detectives, he still manages to use his abilities to solve the cases. That's right. The Mentalist was a seven-season series that ended in 2015. It was produced by CBS and had a talented cast of actors, with Chris Long and David Nutter as directors. And the lead character, Patrick Jane, played by the Golden Globe-winning actor Simon Baker, is at the center of the events in the show. He's joined by a talented cast, including Robin Tunney, Tim Kong, Owain Yeoman, and Amanda Rigetti. The Mentalist is one of the most popular police procedural TV shows out there. The well-crafted story, combined with great acting, makes it a must-see for fans of the genre. I completely agree. The show has a unique and captivating story that keeps you on the edge of your seat, and the characters are well-developed and multidimensional. Overall, The Mentalist is a standout series that is definitely worth watching. If you're a fan of police procedural shows, then you won't be disappointed by this one. The character Patrick Jane in the television show, The Mentalist. Hi, have you watched The Mentalist? I just started watching it and I'm really interested in the character of Patrick Jane. Oh yes, Patrick is a very interesting character. He has advanced observation skills and uses them to his advantage as a psychic and later as a consultant for the CBI. That's right. Patrick becomes motivated to join the CBI after his wife and daughter are killed by Red John, who challenged Patrick when he was working as a psychic. Patrick joins the CBI to track down Red John and get his revenge. While he helps solve cases and catches criminals, he also works to uncover the identity of Red John. And over time, Patrick starts to develop feelings for the CBI team leader, Teresa Lisbon. She is a strong and capable leader who Patrick comes to appreciate and admire. Patrick's motivation for revenge and his desire to solve cases make him a complex and dynamic character. And the relationship between Patrick and Teresa adds another layer to the story. Overall, Patrick Jane is a well-written and well-acted character that is central to the success of The Mentalist. If you're a fan of the show, then you won't want to miss him. Absolutely. 
Simon Baker does a fantastic job of bringing Patrick Jane to life. He captures the character's intelligence, determination, and sense of humor in a way that makes him one of the most memorable characters on TV. The television show Bones. Hi, have you watched Bones? It's a crime drama series that I just started watching and I'm really enjoying it. Oh yes, Bones is a great show. It first aired on the Fox Network on September 13, 2005. That's right. The show is about unsolved crimes and various crimes that are solved with the help of forensic anthropology and archaeology. The main characters are FBI agent Seely Booth, played by David Boreanaz, and forensic anthropologist Dr. Temperance Bones Brennan, played by Emily Deschanel. The other characters are portrayed by talented actors, including Michaela Comlin, T.J. Thine, Eric Milligan, Tamara Taylor, and John Francis Daly. I love how the show blends the excitement of crime solving with the science of anthropology and archaeology. It makes for a unique and engaging story. And the relationship between Booth and Brennan is one of the highlights of the show. They bring different perspectives and skills to the table, but they work well together to solve crimes. Overall, Bones is a well-written and well-acted show that is definitely worth watching. If you're a fan of crime dramas, then you won't want to miss this one. I completely agree. Bones has a great combination of mystery, science, and drama that makes it a standout show. The characters are well-developed and the stories are engaging, making it a must-see for fans of the genre. Visit to Rome Hey, where did you go last weekend? Hi. My little brother and I visited Rome in Italy. Really? That sounds amazing. How was it? It was incredible. We saw so many amazing historical places and took lots of pictures. What was your favorite place that you visited? Definitely the Colosseum. It was so big and impressive. We also went to the Vatican Museum and saw the Sistine Chapel. Wow, that sounds like a great trip. I would love to visit Rome someday. You should. It's a beautiful city with so much history and culture. You'll love it. A short trip to Istanbul. Hey, did you go on a trip recently? Hi. Yes, I went to Istanbul last weekend. Really? How was it? It was great. I visited so many beautiful places and tried delicious food. What was your favorite place that you visited in Istanbul? Definitely the Hagia Sophia. It was so impressive and had such a rich history. I've heard it's a must-visit place in Istanbul. Did you also go to the Blue Mosque? Yes, I did. It was so beautiful, with its blue tiles and intricate designs. That sounds like a great trip. I would love to visit Istanbul someday. You should. It's a wonderful city with so much to see and do. You'll love it. Fast food restaurant. Let's go eat something. What do you feel like eating? How about a fast food restaurant? Sure, that sounds good to me. Do you know any good fast food restaurants around here? Yeah, there's a McDonald's just down the street. Okay, let's go there then. Can I take your order, please? Hi, can I help you with anything today? Yes, please. Can I take your order, please? Sure. I would like a cheeseburger and fries, please. Would you like anything to drink with that? Yes, I'll have a Coke, please. Great, that'll be $7.50. Will that be all? Yes, that's all. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Your order will be ready in a few minutes. Hi. What can I get for you today? Hi there. I'm feeling a bit hungry. Could I get a bowl of soup, please? Of course. Our soup of the day is tomato. Is that okay? That sounds great. Thank you. And could I also get a cup of tea and a slice of cake afterwards, please? Absolutely. We have a few different types of cake. We have chocolate, vanilla, and lemon. Which one would you like? Um, I think I'll go with chocolate, please. Great choice. I'll bring your soup out first, and then your tea and cake afterwards. Is there anything else you need? No, that's all. Thank you so much. No problem at all. Enjoy your meal. I love watching Gilmore Girls TV series. Hey, I heard you love watching TV shows. Which one is your favorite? Yeah, I do. My favorite is Gilmore Girls. Have you heard of it? No, I haven't. What is it about? It's about a mother and daughter who live in a small town and their daily lives. It's funny and heartwarming. That sounds interesting. Where can I watch it? You can watch it on Netflix. Do you have an account? No, I don't. Can I borrow yours? Sure, no problem. I'll share my account with you. Thank you so much. I can't wait to watch it. You're welcome. Let me know what you think of it when you finish. I definitely will. Thanks again for letting me borrow your account. No problem. Happy watching. Have you seen the Hulk movie? Yes, I watched it last night. It was cool. I like the Hulk character. He's so strong. Yeah, but sometimes he gets angry and causes trouble. That's true, but I still like him. Who's your favorite character in the movie? I like Betty Ross. She's smart and brave. Yeah, she's cool too. Do you want to watch it again sometime? Sure, I'd like that. When should we watch it? How about this weekend? Sounds good to me. Camping in the forest. Hi. Do you like camping in the forest? Yes, I love camping in the forest. It's so peaceful. Have you ever gone swimming in a river? Yes, I have. It's so much fun. The water is usually really clear. Have you ever climbed a mountain before? No, I haven't. But it sounds like a really cool thing to do. I love sitting around a campfire and playing music on my guitar. Do you play any instruments? No. I don't play any instruments, but I love listening to music and singing along. That's great. Maybe we can have a sing along later tonight when we're sitting around the campfire. That sounds like a lot of fun. I can't wait. Hi, what would you like to eat? I want to eat grilled meatballs, and after that, I want to have a milky coffee and a fruity dessert, please. Okay, I can prepare that for you. Would you like anything to drink with your meal? No, just the milky coffee, please. All right, I'll bring your order to your table when it's ready. Thank you very much. Rio de Janeiro Carnival. Hey, did you go on a trip recently? Hi. 
Yes, I went to Rio de Janeiro for the carnival. That sounds like fun. What did you do there? We visited some historical and tourist places, and it was a beautiful trip. That's great. What kind of tourist places did you visit? We went to Sugarloaf Mountain, which offers a panoramic view of the city, and also visited Christ the Redeemer statue, which is one of the most famous landmarks in Rio. Oh, I've heard those are both amazing. Did you do anything else besides visiting tourist places? Yes, we also attended a few carnival parades and saw some incredible performances. The costumes and music were so colorful and lively. That must have been amazing. I wish I could have gone with you. You should definitely go someday. It's a once in a lifetime experience. The energy and atmosphere of the carnival are truly unique. I went to Barcelona. Hi there. How was your weekend? Hi. It was great. My little brother and I went to Barcelona. Really? What did you do there? We visited some historical and tourist places and we also watched a football match at the Stadium of Barcelona Sports Club. That sounds like a lot of fun. Which historical places did you visit? We went to La Sagrada Familia, Park Güell, and Casa Batlló. They were all so beautiful. I've heard a lot about La Sagrada Familia. It's one of the most famous landmarks in Barcelona, right? Yes, it is. And it was even more impressive in person. The architecture is amazing. And what about the football match? Was it a good game? It was awesome. We watched Barcelona play against Real Madrid. The atmosphere was electric and it was a great match. That sounds like a fantastic trip. I bet you made some great memories. Definitely. Barcelona is such a wonderful city with so much to see and do. We had a great time and it was a beautiful trip. A cooking show on TV. Hi. How was your weekend? Hi. It was great. My daughter Jane and I watched a cooking show on TV. Oh, that sounds fun. What kind of food did they make? They made different types of dishes, but the most interesting one was a pizza with unique toppings. Really? What were the toppings? They had arugula, prosciutto, and fresh mozzarella on it. It looked delicious. That does sound delicious. Have you ever tried making pizza at home? Yes, I have. But I usually stick to the classic margarita pizza. That's a good choice. What other types of food do you like to cook? I love to cook all sorts of food, but my favorite is probably roasted chicken with vegetables. It's easy to make and always turns out delicious. That sounds great. Do you have any cooking tips for me? Sure. Always make sure to use fresh ingredients and don't be afraid to experiment with different spices and seasonings. And most importantly, have fun and enjoy the process. Istanbul Travel Hey, did you go on a trip recently? Hi. Yes, I went to Istanbul last weekend. Really? How was it? It was great. I visited so many beautiful places and tried delicious food. What was your favorite place that you visited in Istanbul? Definitely the Hagia Sophia. It was so impressive and had such a rich history. I've heard it's a must-visit place in Istanbul. Did you also go to the Blue Mosque? Yes, I did. It was so beautiful, with its blue tiles and intricate designs. That sounds like a great trip. I would love to visit Istanbul someday. You should. It's a wonderful city with so much to see and do. You'll love it. We went to watch Top Gun 2. 
Hey, how was your weekend? Hi. It was great. I went to the movies with my girlfriend and we watched Top Gun 2. Oh, that sounds like fun. What did you guys do after the movie? We had some Egyptian food, it was delicious. And we really liked the movie. That's great to hear. What did you like about Top Gun 2? Well, the action scenes were really cool and the story was interesting. Plus, the special effects were amazing. I've heard mixed reviews about it. Did you guys have any favorite parts of the movie? Definitely the dogfight scenes. They were so intense and exciting. And the music was also really good. That's cool. I might have to go see it for myself. You should. I think you'll really enjoy it. And the Egyptian food is a must-try too. Watching a music program on TV. Hi there. What did you do last night? Hi. I watched my favorite music show on TV with my daughter Mary. Oh, that sounds like fun. Do you and Mary watch that show often? Yeah, we love it. It's a great way for us to bond and enjoy some good music together. That's really sweet. What kind of music do they play on the show? They play a mix of different genres, from pop to rock to R&B. There's something for everyone. That's great. Do you and Mary have a favorite artist or band that you like to listen to? Mary loves Taylor Swift, and I'm a big fan of the Beatles. We both enjoy listening to Adele, too. Those are all great artists. Do you and Mary ever sing along to the songs when you watch the show? Absolutely. We love to sing and dance along to the music. It's always a fun time when we watch the show together. That sounds like a wonderful bonding experience. It's important to have those special moments with your loved ones. I completely agree. Spending time with Mary and enjoying music together is one of my favorite things to do. European Dream Have you ever heard of the European Dream? No, what's that? It's this idea that people have about traveling around Europe and seeing all of the different countries and cultures. That sounds amazing. Have you ever done it? Actually, I did an URL trip with some friends a few years ago. We took the train to a bunch of different countries and cities. That sounds like so much fun. How many countries did you visit? We visited about 10 countries in total. It was pretty fast-paced, but we got to see a lot of amazing places. What were some of the highlights? Oh, there were so many. We went to Paris, Amsterdam, Berlin, Prague, Vienna, Rome, and a bunch of other places. One of my favorite memories was hiking in the Swiss Alps. Wow, that sounds incredible. How long did the trip take? It took about a month, but we crammed a lot of stuff in. We took overnight trains to save time, so we could fit as much as possible into our itinerary. That's so cool. I've always wanted to do something like that. I highly recommend it if you get the chance. It's a great way to see a lot of different places and experience all of the different cultures. Plus, the food is amazing. Thanks for the recommendation. I'll definitely keep it in mind for my next trip. Girl with a pearl earring. Have you heard of Delft? It's the city where the famous painting, Girl with a Pearl Earring, is set. Oh, I think I've heard of that painting. But I don't know much about the city. Delft is a small city in the Netherlands. It's known for its beautiful canals and old buildings. That sounds lovely. Have you been there? Yes, I visited Delft last summer. 
It was amazing. The canals are so picturesque, and there are lots of cute little cafes and shops. Wow, that sounds like a great trip. Did you learn any Dutch while you were there? A little bit, but most people in Delft speak English too. It was still fun to try to learn some Dutch phrases though. I'd love to visit Delft someday. Maybe I'll even see the girl with a pearl earring painting in person. You definitely should. It's a beautiful city with a lot of history and charm. Winter Camp Hey, have you thought about going to English Winter Camp? I play football every weekend. She never plays football. People watch TV in the living room. We have a single room available. I love doing exercises. What is your favorite sport? Does she live in London? This is a girl. This is a girl. She is going to school. <laughs> this is a boy. Kevin is a good boy. He is a naughty boy. This is a police car. This is a school bus. She has written a new book. She has written a new book. The girl eating a banana and smiles. The boy is washing hands. The girl is washing hands with soap in the bathroom. The woman is selling colorful textiles. The woman looking and trying clothes in the shop. The college student walking on campus. I am writing now. You are reading a book. You are reading a book. We are listening to music. We are listening to music. Mother is in the kitchen now. Mother is in the kitchen now. She is cooking dinner. She is cooking dinner. Do you want to share with me your dinner? Do you want to share with me your dinner? Does Jane like pizza? Does Jane like pizza? My father is in his office. My father is in his office. My sister is in her office.
My sister is in her office. I'm interested in this book. I'm interested in this book. I'm good at tennis. I'm good at tennis. How many flowers are they? How many flowers are they? What's the time in New York? What's the time in New York? They are giving a party next Sunday. They are giving a party next Sunday. You like animals very much. You like animals very much. Does the cat drink milk in the morning? Does the cat drink milk in the morning? Does your sister have breakfast in the morning? Does your sister have breakfast in the morning? Your hat looks very nice. Your hat looks very nice. The car is near the beach. The car is near the beach. How often do you go to the cinema? How often do you go to the cinema? How many sisters do you have? How many sisters do you have? I'm very thirsty. I want to drink something. I'm very thirsty. I want to drink something. Do you have anything to eat? Do you have anything to eat? I have a lot of thing to eat. I have a lot of thing to eat. She never plays football. She is a good tennis player. Who did you go with? I went with my parents and my sister. Did you have a good time? Yes. We did. It was wonderful. Did you stay at a campsite? No, we didn't. We stayed at a hotel. Was the weather good? Yes, it was. It was hot almost every day. Did you eat at restaurants? No, we didn't. We usually ate at the hotel. What were Jane and Tom doing? They were checking some reports. 
What was Jennifer doing? She was talking on the phone. What were the directors doing? They were having a meeting. What was Jane doing? She was working on the computer. What was Tom doing? He was reading a letter. Was the young man listening to music? Yes, he was. Was the older man reading a book? No, he wasn't. He was reading a newspaper. Have you bought a bigger car? Yes, I have. Have you moved house? No, I haven't. Have you got married? No, I haven't. What's the longest river in the world? What's the biggest continent? What country has the largest population? What country has the largest population? My sister wakes up late. I wake up early every day. My sister does exercises every morning. My brother watches TV in the morning. Tom is sitting in the cafeteria. He is sitting alone. He is eating dinner. Tom like a cup of coffee. He'd like some sugar in his coffee. I'd like a hamburger for dinner. We like to eat in fast food restaurants. The students watched an interesting movie. They often watch movies together. They enjoyed it a lot. What does this word mean? The class asked the teacher many questions. The teacher answered their questions clearly. The students listened very carefully. Let's practice English. When did you study? I studied last night. Where did you study? I studied at the library. Does anyone here speak Spanish? Jane is going to leave in a couple of days.
The class is working on a project today. We are going to finish this weekend. Would you take a message please? This is very important. This is very difficult. They are very busy. It's getting cold outside. The weather today is colder than yesterday. The weather is getting colder outside. They're in my class. They're interesting. They'll be right back. Thanks for your help. That looks great. Please fill out this form. Did you go to work yesterday? Did they arrive on time? Where did she go? Where did he go? What did you say? What did you do yesterday? What happened last night? The little boy is sick. He isn't well. The woman is tall. She isn't short. When I saw him, he was playing tennis. When I saw him, she was playing chess. I was eating dinner when the guests arrived. I was reading when he came in. How are you? Hi, can you tell me about your family? Sure. I have a mom, a dad, and a little sister. What about you? I have a mom, a dad, and an older brother. Do you all get along well? Yes, we do. We like to spend time together playing games or watching movies. That sounds like fun. What do you like to do with your sister? We like to play dolls and go to the park together. She's really fun to be around. That's nice. What about your parents? What do they do? My mom is a teacher, and my dad works at a bank. They both work really hard to take care of us. That's great. What do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a doctor and help people who are sick. That's a noble goal. I'm sure you'll be a great doctor one day. Thanks. What about you? What do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a musician and write my own songs. That's cool. Maybe one day we can play music together. That would be awesome. Thanks for sharing about your family. You're welcome. It was nice talking with you. Hi, can you tell me about your morning routine? Sure. First, I wake up and brush my teeth. Okay, what do you do after that? I take a shower and get dressed. What do you like to wear? 
I usually wear jeans and a t-shirt. What about you? I like to wear skirts or dresses. What do you do after you get dressed? I go downstairs and have breakfast with my family. What do you usually eat for breakfast? I like to have cereal and fruit, or sometimes eggs and toast. That sounds delicious. Do you do anything else before you leave the house? Yes, I pack my bag and make sure I have everything I need for the day. What do you like to bring with you? I always bring my books, my lunch, and my water bottle. That's a good idea. Thanks for sharing about your morning routine. You're welcome. Hi, can you tell me about your school life? Sure. I go to school every day and have classes in different subjects. What subjects do you like? I like math and science. What about you? I like English and art. What do you do at recess? I like to play with my friends and run around outside. What do you like to do? I like to read or draw. Do you eat lunch at school? Yes, I do. I bring my own lunch from home. What do you usually pack for lunch? I like to bring a sandwich, some fruit, and a snack like chips or crackers. That sounds good. Do you have any after-school activities? Yes, I play soccer after school twice a week. What about you? I like to play music and practice singing. Thanks for sharing about your school life. You're welcome. It was nice talking with you. Hi, can you tell me about your favorite holiday? Sure. My favorite holiday is Christmas. What do you like to do during Christmas? I like to decorate the tree with my family, sing Christmas songs, and open presents on Christmas morning. That sounds like a lot of fun. What do you usually get for Christmas? I like getting books and toys, and sometimes clothes or shoes. That's cool. Do you have any special holiday traditions? Yes, we like to bake cookies and make hot chocolate on Christmas Eve. Yum, that sounds delicious. Do you have any other favorite holidays? I like Halloween too, because I get to dress up in costumes and go trick or treating with my friends. That's a fun holiday. Thanks for sharing about your favorite holidays. You're welcome. It was nice talking with you. Hi, can you tell me about your winter vacation? Sure. I went skiing with my family on a snowy mountain. Wow, that sounds like fun. What did you do while you were there? We went skiing and snowboarding, and we built a snowman too. Did you take any lessons to learn how to ski? Yes, I took a lesson with a teacher to learn how to ski safely. That's good. Did you have any accidents? No, I didn't. I was careful and followed the rules. That's important. What did you like most about skiing? I liked going fast down the slopes and feeling the wind in my face. That sounds exhilarating. Do you want to go skiing again? That sounds exhilarating. Do you want to go skiing again? That sounds like a great plan. Thanks for sharing about your winter vacation. You're welcome. It was nice talking with you. Hi, do you have any brothers or sisters? Yes, I have a sister and a brother. How about you? I have a sister and a brother too. What are your parents like? My parents are very kind and supportive. 
They always encourage me to do my best in school and in life. How about your parents? My parents are the same. They're always there for me and they love me no matter what. That's great to hear. What do you like to do as a family? We like to go on hikes and bike rides, and we also like to watch movies and play board games together. That sounds like fun. We like to go on picnics and have barbecues in the park. That sounds great. Maybe we can do that together sometime. Yeah, that would be cool. It's nice to have family to spend time with and make memories with. I agree. Family is important. Definitely. We're lucky to have such great families. Hi there. How's your day going? It's going pretty well, thanks. How about you? Oh, I'm doing great. I've been spending a lot of time with my family lately, and it's been really nice. That's wonderful. What have you been up to with your family? Well, we've been taking care of our pet cat at home. She's such a sweet and lovable animal. Ah, that's great. What kind of things does your cat like to do? My little sister Jane loves playing with her. They have so much fun together, especially with all of the toys and games we have for the cat. That sounds like a lot of fun. What kinds of games do they play together? Jane likes to play hide and seek with the cat, or sometimes they just chase each other around the house. It's always really cute to watch. I bet it is. Having a pet is such a wonderful way to add joy and love to your life. I completely agree. Our cat is such an important part of our family now, and we couldn't imagine life without her. Hey, I wanted to show you something cool. We got a new addition to our retriever. He's really smart and loves to go for walks, especially down by the beach. That sounds like so much fun. Does he ever get scared or nervous? Not really, he's pretty confident. But if he ever feels unsure, he just comes and cuddles with us. That's so sweet. What's his name? His name is Max. We picked it because it's short and easy for him to remember. Well, he sounds like a great addition to the family. I can't wait to meet him. Hi, have you heard about the retreat center in the mountains where you can learn English and live a healthy lifestyle at the same time? No, I haven't. Tell me more. Well, it's a program where you can stay in a cabin in the mountains and have English lessons every day. And in your free time, you can go hiking, do yoga, and yoga, and learn about healthy cooking and nutrition. That sounds amazing. Is it just for people who want to learn English, or can anyone go? Anyone can go. It's a great way to learn English and also focus on your health and wellness. How long is the program, and how much does it cost? The program is a week long, and the cost varies depending on the season and the type of cabin you choose. But they offer discounts for early booking and for groups of friends. I'm definitely interested. Do you think the English lessons are suitable for someone at my level? Yes, they have classes for all levels, from beginner to advanced. Plus, the teachers are really experienced and friendly, so you'll feel comfortable and confident. I'm sold. When does the program start, and how do I sign up? The program runs year-round, so you can choose the dates that work best for you. And you can sign up online or by phone. I can give you the website and phone number if you want. That would be great. Thanks so much for telling me about this program. Hey, do you like swimming? Yeah, I love it. I could swim in a lake, a river, or even in a pool. That's cool. I've never been a great swimmer myself. Really? It's not that hard once you get the hang of it. 
Do you want me to show you some basic strokes? Sure, that would be great. B, all right, so first let's start with freestyle. You want to keep your face in the water and kick your legs while reaching forward with your arms. Like this. Yes, that's it. Now, let's try backstroke. You want to lie on your back and kick your legs while reaching back with your arms. Okay, I think I'm getting the hang of it. Great. You're a natural. Maybe we should go swimming together sometime. That would be fun. Do you have a favorite place to swim? I really love swimming in the ocean. There's something so refreshing about it. Yeah, I've never swum in the ocean before. I bet it's amazing. Yeah, I've never swum in the ocean before. I bet it's amazing. That sounds like a great idea. I can't wait. I really want to learn English, but I don't know where to start. Well, one way to learn English is by practicing and using it in real-life situations. For example, if you go skiing in the mountains during the winter, you can practice speaking English with the ski instructors and other skiers. That's a good idea. But how do I know if I'm saying things correctly? You can start by learning basic grammar and vocabulary, and then practicing with others. You can also listen to English music and watch English movies to get more familiar with the language. What kind of grammar and vocabulary should I learn? Well, for starters, you can learn simple phrases like how are you? And what's your name? And basic grammar structures like subject-verb agreement and simple past tense. That sounds easy enough. Can you give me an example of a sentence I might say while skiing? Sure. You could say, I love skiing in the mountains. It's so beautiful and peaceful. Or can you help me with my technique? I'm having trouble turning. Okay, I think I get it. I'm excited to try speaking English on the ski slopes. Great, I'm excited for you too. Learning a new language can be challenging, but it's also really rewarding. Just remember to practice and don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's how you learn and improve. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm good, thanks for asking. How about you? I'm doing well, thanks. So, I've been learning English, and I want to try out some new phrases. Can I practice with you? Of course, I'd be happy to help you practice. What's the phrase you want to learn? I want to learn how to say, I have a small, beautiful red car, in English. Okay, great. So, in English, that would be, I have a small, beautiful red car. Wow, that sounds so different from how we would say it in my language. Yeah, English can be a little tricky with its grammar and word order. But once you get the hang of it, it becomes easier. I hope so. Can you break down the sentence for me, so I can understand it better? Sure. So, the subject of the sentence is, I, which is the person who has the car. Then, we have the verb, have, which tells us that the person possesses the car. After that, we have the adjectives, small, and beautiful, which describe the car. Finally, we have the adjective, red, which tells us the color of the car. Oh, I think I understand now. Can you use the sentence in a longer conversation, so I can see how it fits in? Sure. Let's say you're talking to a friend about your plans for the weekend. You could say, I'm planning to take my small, beautiful red car out for a drive and enjoy the sunny weather. Do you want to join me? Oh, I see. That makes sense. Thanks for your help. I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of English grammar. You're welcome. Keep practicing, and you'll get better in no time. 
Hey, do you have any suggestions for improving my English? Yeah, one thing you can do is watch movies and TV shows in English with subtitles. It can help you improve your listening and reading skills. That's a great idea. Do you have any recommendations for shows or movies? You can try watching Friends or The Simpsons. They're both popular TV shows with lots of humor and everyday conversations. Okay, I'll give those a try. Do I need to watch them with English subtitles or can I watch them in my native language? It's best to watch them in English with English subtitles. That way, you can match what you hear with what you read and improve your understanding of the language. All right, I'll do that. Thank you for the suggestion. No problem. I hope it helps. Hi, I want to improve my English. Do you have any suggestions? Yes, one thing you can do is read books, newspapers, and articles in English. It can help you improve your vocabulary and comprehension. That sounds like a good idea. What should I read? You can try reading children's books or magazines, like National Geographic Kids. They're written in simpler English and have pictures to help you understand the content. Okay, I'll look for those. What about newspapers and articles? You can try reading news websites like BBC News or CNN. They have articles on a variety of topics and are written in clear, easy to understand English. That makes sense. Do I need to understand every word or can I use a dictionary? It's okay if you don't understand every word. You can use a dictionary to look up unfamiliar words or phrases. The more you read, the more you'll start to understand the language. All right, I'll try that. Thanks for the advice. You're welcome. Good luck with your English. Hi, I want to get better at speaking English. Do you have any suggestions? Yes, one thing you can do is practice speaking with native speakers. It can help you improve your pronunciation and fluency. That's a good idea, but how can I find native speakers to practice with? You can try joining a language exchange program or finding language partners online. You can also attend English speaking events or clubs in your area. Okay, that sounds like a good plan. What should I talk about with them? You can talk about your interests, hobbies, or daily life. Just try to have a conversation and use the language as much as you can. Got it. But what if I make mistakes or can't think of the right words to say? It's okay to make mistakes. That's how you learn. Just keep practicing and don't be afraid to ask for help or clarification. Native speakers will understand that you're still learning and will be happy to help. Okay, that makes sense. I'll try to find some language partners and practice speaking more. Thanks for the advice. You're welcome. Good luck with your English. Hi, I want to improve my English listening skills. Do you have any suggestions? Yes, one thing you can do is listen to English podcasts and radio programs. It can help you get used to the sounds and rhythms of the language. That sounds like a good idea. What kind of podcasts or radio programs should I listen to? You can try listening to podcasts or radio shows on topics that interest you, like news, sports, or music. There are also podcasts specifically designed for English language learners, like English as a Second Language or All Ears English. Okay. I'll look for those. But what if I can't understand everything they say? It's okay if you don't understand everything. Just try to focus on the main ideas and key words. You can also listen to the same podcast or program more than once to help you understand better. Got it. Should I take notes while I'm listening? That can be helpful, especially if there are new words or phrases that you don't know. You can write them down and look them up later. Okay, I'll try that. 
Thanks for the advice. You're welcome. Good luck with your listening. Hi, I want to improve my English, but I don't know where to start. Do you have any suggestions? Yes, one thing you can do is join an English language course or tutoring. It can help you get more structured and focused practice with the language. That sounds like a good idea, but how do I find a course or tutor? You can try searching online or asking at your local language school. There are also many online courses and tutors available, so you can find one that fits your schedule and budget. Okay, I'll look into that. But what if I can't afford to pay for a course or tutor? There are also many free resources available online, like language learning websites or YouTube channels. You can also try finding a language exchange partner who can help you practice speaking and listening. That's a good point. But what if I'm too shy to practice speaking with a tutor or exchange partner? It's okay to feel nervous, but remember that everyone has to start somewhere. Just try to relax and take things one step at a time. With practice, you'll start to feel more comfortable speaking in English. All right, I'll give it a try. Thanks for the advice. You're welcome. Good luck with your English. Hi, I want to get better at English. Do you have any tips? Yes, one thing you can do is focus on building your vocabulary and improving your grammar. It can help you understand the language better and communicate more effectively. That sounds like a good idea. How can I build my vocabulary and improve my grammar? You can try using flashcards to learn new words, or reading books and articles to see how grammar is used in context. There are also many online resources available, like grammar exercises or vocabulary quizzes. Okay, I'll give that a try. But what if I don't understand something? It's okay to ask for help or clarification. You can ask your teacher, tutor, or language exchange partner to explain things to you, or look up the information online. That makes sense. But how do I remember all the new words and grammar rules? It's important to practice regularly and use the language as much as you can. You can try writing sentences with the new words or grammar rules, or speaking with a language exchange partner to practice using them in conversation. All right, I'll try that. Thanks for the advice. You're welcome. Good luck with your vocabulary and grammar. Hello. My name is Jane. I am 17 years old. I'm studying in high school. I have two sisters. My mother works at the bank. My father is a doctor. We have a beautiful house with a garden. I get up at 7 a.m. on weekdays. I wash my hands and face. My mother prepares breakfast. We have breakfast together as a family. My sister Mary is 9 years old, Isabella is 12 years old. My father drives us to school on the way to work. The first lesson starts at 9 o'clock. I have lunch in the canteen. I love toast. School ends at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I go home by bus. I do the homework first. I help my mother prepare dinner. My father watches the news on TV. We have dinner as a family. After dinner, we drink tea in the garden. My sisters play games. 
I go to bed at 11 p.m. Before, I brush my teeth and read for half an hour. My sister Mary listens to music. And so another day ends. Hello. My name is Jane. I am 17 years old. I'm studying in high school. I have two sisters. My mother works at the bank. My father is a doctor. We have a beautiful house with a garden. I get up at 7 a.m. on weekdays. I wash my hands and face. My mother prepares breakfast. We have breakfast together as a family. My sister Mary is 9 years old, Isabella is 12 years old. My father drives us to school on the way to work. The first lesson starts at 9 o'clock. I have lunch in the canteen. I love toast. School ends at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I go home by bus. I do the homework first. I help my mother prepare dinner. My father watches the news on TV. We have dinner as a family. After dinner, we drink tea in the garden. My sisters play games. I go to bed at 11 p.m. Before, I brush my teeth and read for half an hour. My sister Mary listens to music. And so another day ends. My name is Jane. I'm English, but I live in Barcelona, Spain. My father has a new job here. I love being in Barcelona because all the people here are really nice and helpful. I have got dark hair and big green eyes. I'm not very tall and I'm medium weight. I am a creative and hardworking person. I want to be a doctor, so I always study a lot. I like spending time alone. I also like watching movies and listening to music in my free time. Hi everyone. I'm Kevin. I'm new at this school, but I'm not new in London. I'm short and thin. I have got blue eyes and I wear glasses. I am a cheerful person. I really like telling funny stories and making jokes. But my teachers sometimes warn me to stop talking in the class because I am talkative. I can be selfish but only for my car. My favorite activity is driving a car with my sister at weekends. I also enjoy surfing on the net. My name is Jane. I'm English, but I live in Barcelona, Spain. My father has a new job here. I love being in Barcelona. Because all the people here are really nice and helpful. 
I have got dark hair and big green eyes. I'm not very tall and I'm medium weight. I am a creative and hardworking person. I want to be a doctor, so I always study a lot. I like spending time alone. I also like watching movies and listening to music in my free time. Hi everyone. I'm Kevin. I'm new at this school. But I'm not new in London. I'm short and thin. I have got blue eyes and I wear glasses. I am a cheerful person. I really like telling funny stories and making jokes. But my teachers sometimes warn me to stop talking in the class because I'm talkative. I can be selfish but only for my car. My favorite activity is driving a car with my sister at weekends. I also enjoy surfing on the net. English listening and speaking practice. 1. At the restaurant. Hello. How are you today? Hi. I am good, thank you. And you? I am fine. Are you hungry? Yes, I am very hungry. Let's go to a restaurant. Great idea. Do you like pizza? I love pizza. Let's go to a pizza place. Okay. What is your favorite pizza? My favorite pizza is pepperoni. What about you? I like cheese pizza. It is simple and delicious. I agree. Cheese pizza is very good too. How many pizzas should we order? I think one large pizza is enough for both of us. Me too. Should we order a salad as well? That's a good idea. I like Caesar salad. Me too. Let's order one Caesar salad to share. Great. I am also thirsty. What do you want to drink? I would like a lemonade. What about you? I will have an orange juice. Okay, let's order our food. Excuse me, waiter. We are ready to order. Sure. What would you like to order? We would like a large cheese and pepperoni pizza, a Caesar salad, a lemonade, and an orange juice, please. Thank you. Your order will be ready soon. Thank you very much. While we wait for our food, let's talk about our day. How was your day? My day was good. I went to the park with my dog. What did you do today? I went to the library to study. I have a big test tomorrow. I hope you do well on your test. Thank you. I hope so too. Our food is here. It looks delicious. Yes, it does. Let's eat. Enjoy your meal. You too. This pizza is very tasty. I agree. The salad is good too. Yes, it is. I am glad we came to this restaurant. Me too. We should come here again soon. Definitely. After we finish eating, let's go for a walk. That's a great idea. We can walk in the park. I like the park. It is peaceful and beautiful. Yes, it is. I enjoy spending time there. Me too. Let's finish our meal and go for a walk. Sounds good. I am enjoying our conversation. Me too. We should talk more often. I agree. It is nice to have a good friend like you. Thank you. I feel the same way. Great. Now let's finish our food and enjoy the rest of our evening. Yes, let's do that. 2. In the city center. Hello. 
My name is Kevin. Hello friends. What is your name? My name is Kevin. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks. Where are you from, Jean? I'm from London. Where are you staying? I'm staying at the Golden Hotel. What is your nationality? I'm Turkish. I'm coming from Istanbul. What's your job? I'm a teacher. Where are you going? I'm going to the hotel. What do you do? I work in a bank. When were you born? I was born in 1995. Where were you born? I was born in Istanbul. How old are you? I'm 24 years old. Where are they from? They are from England. Does your father have a car? No, he doesn't. Is there a restaurant near here? Yes, there is one across the street. Does he like fish? Yes, he does. When is your birthday? My birthday is on June 1st. Who is your favorite singer? My favorite singer is Celine Dion. What is your favorite football team? My favorite football team is Real Madrid. Are you single or married? I am single. Are you married? Yes, I'm married. Do you have a boyfriend? I have a boyfriend. Do you have any brothers or sisters? I have two brothers and a sister. Do you have any siblings? I don't have any siblings. Do you have children? I don't have any children. What is your wife's name? My wife's name is Mary. What are your hobbies? My hobbies are playing basketball and listening to music. What do you do in your free time? I go to the theater in my free time. Can you speak English? Yes, I can speak English. What do you like doing? I like to read books. What kind of books do you read? I read novels. What kind of food do you like? I like organic vegetables and fruits. What kind of films do you watch? I watch action films. How do you go to work? I go to work by train. Does Mary play guitar? No, she doesn't. What time do you get up? I get up about 9.15. What time do you have breakfast? 
I have breakfast at 9.30 a.m. What time is it? It's 10 o'clock. What time did you get up yesterday? I got up at 7 o'clock yesterday. What time do you go to bed? I go to bed at 10 p.m. How tall are you? I'm 1 meter 70 centimeters tall. Live your life. No matter what they say, do what makes you happy. Did you feed the hunter today? Yeah, I fed him earlier today. Nice. Can you give him a bathe later? Sure, I'll do that later. Thank you. You know you need to take him to the vet appointment next week? I know. What time do we need to be there? You need to be there at 9 in the morning. Okay, I got it. Do you smell that? Yes, it's disgusting. I hate cigarette smoke. I can't stand it. It smells bad, really bad. Some smokers think they are cool. I think it's pathetic. A cigarette controls them. Don't, Don't smoke, smoke cigarettes. cigarettes. It's, it's really, really bad, bad for, for your health. health. Are you going to be in town this weekend? I'll be in town. Do you have plans for the weekend? No, I don't have any plans. Sunday is Tina's birthday, and we are throwing her a party. I would love to come to the party. Where are you going to have it? What time will it start? It's going to be at Phil's apartment building. It will start at 5 p.m. It's going to be fun. Isn't there a pool in Phil's apartment? I totally forgot. It's going to be a pool party. Don't forget to bring your trunks. I won't forget it. And I'll get a big present for Tina. Hello, try to repeat 